This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, 705 Tuesdays. We've been talking about professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on Twitter, in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, with a giant crew here ready to talk wrestling. First of all, let's go around. First, let's go to the uh, quarantined in his madhouse bunker, Mad Mike in Beacon, New York, joining us. Sorg, I think we have too many people on the show. Okay. I'm going to get rid of half of them. Oh, Hold no. On. Ow! <laughs> oh, wait. Sorry. Wrong half. Let me bring them back. Oh. Sound effects and everything. Hey, how how you doing, guys? <laughs> See, there we go. Uh, well, it, it worked out because we are still missing Ronnie. So, um... Oh, no, that was by design. That was by design? Okay. Yeah, he will never come back. Who who is missing? Nobody's missing Ronnie. Uh, Bradley's here. Nobody's missing Ronnie. Nobody's missing Ronnie? No, nobody's missing Ronnie. Not even his, like, pets or or anybody? Nobody is missing Ronnie. Man. Kill Bradley is here. How you doing? Hello, Mr. Sorg. I understand you were just here. A couple nights ago. While I was gone, you were hanging out in my studio. Yes, uh, watching the uh, Elimination Chamber with uh, Matt and Jennifer and Missy and uh, Riz came by for a while. It was fun. Ooh, a Riz nice. cameo. A, a, a Riz uh, run-in. A Riz run-in. <laughs> it, was, was, it was fun. He just came in and delivered a Riz KO. Uh, well, he talked and put us to sleep. If that's Oh, anywhere. okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's basically it. Yeah. Uh, that, out of nowhere. Right. Out of nowhere. Also with us, as advertised, Marcus Mann. Oh! Hey! Who advertised me? Who advertised you? That the, was a mistake. The Facebook. That was a mistake. The Facebook advertised you, that, sir. That was a mistake. <laughs> I missed off camera. Bradley completely got bopped <laughs> in the head with something. <laughs> Where did that come Where from? Did that come? <laughs> Oh, Jeez. that's out of nowhere. That that's was out, out of nowhere. nowhere. Marcus, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing all right. I don't know what's going You're on. You're hanging out uh, yeah, backstage yeah. at wrestling shows all over Ooh, the yeah. area. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I hang out at shows a lot now. That's apparently my yes. deal. That's apparently what I do now. Still hanging around a rise. Yeah. Uh, you can find me backstage at most shows. <laughs> well, legitimately, I just like I just go to wrestling shows and hang out now. It's fucking it is. It, it, it is. Right. It was like I, I go to AIW in December. I'm like, hey, Marcus is here. <laughs> Yeah, was that the, the Marcus, Odeon what are, show? Marcus, yeah. what are you doing in Cleveland? I'm trying to get work. <laughs> 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 trying to get work, but they're not losing me. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, I, uh, I've been going around to AIW shows. Uh, was at Premiere, mm-hmm. doing some stuff for Dabrowski. Uh, sometimes I hang out at IWC. Sometimes I'll go to any, KSWA. You know, usually at Rise, you'll see me there with some sort of headset on yes. running around, <laughs> uh, drinking and high-fiving. There you go. There you go. As you do. And we got also, of course, Mainstream Matt is here. Um, also, oh, you already finished your Corona. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Mainstream Matt here to preside over another week and round of uh, Mayhem Mania. What is that, by the way? What? What? I'll explain it to you later. Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Good. good. Sorg, we've got a hell of a mess to clean up. Oh, no. Last week was an unmitigated disaster. <laughs> oh, no. My wife screwed it up. Chad the Shad made my kid cry, bra. And I don't know. We've only got like three weeks left. I don't know if we can fix this in time. <laughs> And also, Farnsworth is here. Oh, I'm just set dressing. You just yeah, set yeah, dressing? Yeah. <laughs> Commentator extraordinaire. Uh, did you learn any Spanish at, uh, at WrestleRex? See, because when I ran into you, <laughs> you were about to interview the Luchadors, and then, and then and, I wasn't, and then and then it was like they don't know Spanish. What are we doing? No, no, no. That actually happened the show before. I was just trying to warn people, like, so we need to we need to make sure they know what's going on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, it had been a while since I busted out Spanish. Mm-hmm. I, I, have I told any of you this story? 
If no. you watch the last WrestleRex, so uh, the whole thing was they'd come back and then I was just going to feed them a line and they would go. Yeah. And so I was, I went, was trying to say, gentlemen, how was that? And uh, they come back, amigos, amigos, como fue eso? My Spanish is not as strong as it used to be. And that was more, <laughs> what was that? At which point, Tim Plario looks at me and goes, es lucha. <laughs> oh i'm glad that we're bringing such cultured professional wrestling to this town for you <laughs> oh fantastic and you see we have a little bit of a we have a studio audience amassing in the background here as people are coming by all in it and and and, and stealing our corona uh I heard about the corona. yeah that's yeah that, that's that's what it is they heard there was beer here on the stream and started stopping by we're out now. So nobody else comes. Oh, I mean, it, where you're invited. Isn't but. there like a usual badger stash? <laughs> <laughs> the bad, no, no, no. The badger stash was here past expiration, and oh. I finally had to throw some of it away. It's usually a badger stash somewhere. <laughs> that, that, I that's, a different, that's a different Patreon. Level. I mean, unless it's yeah, like, yeah. unless she's like, like literally has like, like stashed it somewhere, somewhere. within the studio. Sure, I'm unaware. Badger. Of course she does. Yeah, dude. So like, uh, last Rise show, um, like, Zorg, you've been there. Um, yeah, I've been around. So like <laughs> in the backstage, like I always have like a cooler mm-hmm. like, and I always, I always have drinks and stuff that I have. And one of the rules is like, if you're done and you have nothing else to do for the night or anything like that, if you want to have a drink with me, that's fine. Like I'm very, very lenient about that. Um, but like I, for some reason I was walking by and I went in to get a drink and I look in there and there's Ziggy like in my cooler and she looks up like <gasps> like as i see her and it's all dark and she looks like a raccoon like inside <laughs> of it <laughs> and i'm like you can have one she's like i know i just i know but i feel real awkward right now <laughs> and she's like i feel like i'm like a trash panda in your in your trash right now and I was like, no, you can have one. That's fine. Oh, jeez. <laughs> the shenanigans, the backstage shenanigans at Rise are amazing. Uh, but anyways, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Please go check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com so you can keep up and you know when all of this is happening uh, over there. Please subscribe to us on uh, your uh, favorite podcast app or the video versions on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, please hit us up at that email address. Good time. Good times at wrestling Good mayhem times. show.com. Thank you. 412 206 WMS0 is the hotline. Please drop a line in there. Tweet us at Mayhem Show and please follow the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook uh, page and group. Uh, the, the group is really important so you guys can uh, hang out. And we have a lot of great uh, chat throughout the week, a lot of great conversation throughout the week uh, going on over there. And of course, we are live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern on Facebook Live where there's over 20 people in there uh, checking us out right now so what's giving a shout out had hey, uh, jennifer carlin's is hanging out potter uh and, and, and uh, the rise roster basically yeah. <laughs> as well uh, I, by the way i want to point out real quick I, w- I want to point out real quick that someone who just jumped in is pittsburgh's mad mike it's pittsburgh's mad mike pittsburgh mad mike just joined the chat and <laughs> hello mike it's very <laughs> good to see you hold on if that's true yes motherfucker i got a bone to pick <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> we do have New York's Mad Mike and the Wrestling Mayhem shows Mad Mike, but Pittsburgh's Mad Mike, who I have not, I have not seen Mike in God probably. Well, I, a couple I years. saw him at the in, in uh, oh with Beast Brawl. Uh, no, no, uh, the uh, uh, last uh, PWX Five Society show. Oh, the last one. He was That's there for right. that one, I believe. Yeah, I did not see Mike, but I have not seen Mike in a long time. So, hello, Mike. Good to see you. He was a, Mike. Was, uh, Mike was uh, one of the no, best no. guys I worked with. No, not you. Uh, you no, no you were one of the worst guys I've worked with. So, <laughs> Mad Mike. Mad Mike is great. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna get now very I'm confusing. confused. This is why we can never have him on the show because it's just gonna not work. <laughs> I you know, see, or I'll be like, "Any Mayhem show like, featuring Mad Mike." I'm like, "Why the fuck are you interviewing one of your own co-hosts?" That's really weird. It, into the Mad Microverse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more time from the beginning. Uh, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Sorg. I just. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. This is why we've been podcasting for fourteen years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. We're in the we're we're hip with the kids. Um, oh, and, and sorry. Ty Cross is begging for attention, and that's the only time I'm going to say his name. Okay, there you go. 
<laughs> Anyways, uh, you can also, there's more things to plug. Uh, thank you to our uh, streaming partners, the 405 media.com. They're playing us right next to Trump coverage for some reason uh, every uh, night at midnight. Uh, <laughs> you can also uh, support the show at patreon.com slash wrestling main show. Guys, I believe, I, 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 you know, look at the numbers. Um, I believe we had the biggest Patreon month ever. Nice. Yay. Ever. <laughs> thank you so much uh, for supporting the show. Uh, I'm a little less stressed about those server fees this month. Uh, and uh, thank you so much, our friends at the fan of the show level. Bo Diggity! Woo! Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Team Hammerfist, and our friends at the Poppy Club level, Bradley Brothers. Whoa, 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 okay. whoa, 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 whoa. I want to bring up something. I was the person that yes. said, yes. I do not want to be in the Poppy Club. Mm -hmm. Well, you can go fuck yourself. Well, <laughs> you know what? You don't want to be in the poppy club? Donate more or less or less. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is why I'm, I put more money into the rise. Patreon. Oh, oh, rise doesn't do wow. this. <laughs> we might have no. something for you here, uh, Bradley. Uh, sooner or later just, just stay tuned stay tuned please uh also <laughs> also at the poppy club uh dave potter Ta kyle turner uh daniel towery and tina keys at the pizza club level our friends doc remedy and our friends at the Rev wrestling revolution.com who provides all the great graphics for mayhem mania and at the manager 20 dollar level occupy wrestling mad mike at 21 dollars and farnsworth investments and i have an asterisk by this uh farnsworth uh do you what what is this about what wait wait matt what are you doing you're making a money well, sign making it rain baby okay I, everything i've learned i learned from 90s hip-hop okay big, big bank take little bank so okay uh, let's make me the top donator for the month oh yes. what is that what is it that is an extra 10 spot on top of your 20 putting me at the 30 dollar level whoa whoa I don't know. We don't have a level for that, but you are now a super manager. Yeah. He's off the rating system. He's yes. just gone. I, I would. I've I would like to propose the rating that this, system this for a is month the, and a half. Could, could we silence him? He he doesn't give as <laughs> much <laughs> as I do. <laughs> um, I think my term should be. I think my term should be ultra manager. Ultra manager. Ultra manager. Okay. So, All right. There we go. All right. Okay. Now, All right. now we can bring Mad, Mad, uh, Mad Mike back. So, so are, I, I, can I make a motion? Can, I, I make that we, uh, that we name <laughs> Is this him? a board meeting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I guess I mean, so. We've got quorum, but there's enough of us here. We've <laughs> <laughs> got quorum. <laughs> Jesus, Sorgi, Sorgi, I, I think we should refer to the thirty dollars level as the Farnsworth level. Okay, Ooh. the Farnsworth investment level. Feels like that. Farnsworth I like that. Investment level. I, like I like that. that. I like that. Thank you, Farnsworth, for I, contributing to the show. I move for a no vote in Chancellor or vote of no confidence in Chancellor Valorum. <laughs> <laughs> You realize that so this, this is how liberty dies. The spice routes and all the trade union just goes to hell. What are you doing? <laughs> we saw Gungan's gonna die. <laughs> Oh my hold, god. Hold on. I was wondering who hold you were on. gonna side with there. <laughs> hold on, Sorg, oh, Sorg, I have, I have a comment. Yes. So this is how Liberty dies. Thunderous <laughs> <laughs> <Andrus> applause. <laughs> oh jeez. Um Look, the prequels are good. You guys can all go what? fuck yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. Wait. Informal poll. Informal poll right now. If you could only watch either the prequels. Or the sequels, not the original trilogy. What do you watch? Oh, Pre sequels. Prequel. Sequels. Okay. Prequel. Sequels. Yeah. Well, nope. the Disney prequels. sequels? Yes. I'm, I'm prequels. Oof. Whoa. Oh, prequels. You got a buddy there. I'm, I'm prequels. Yeah. Prequels are significantly better. Mm. Mm. They have plot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they do have a goal yeah. in those three movies. Yeah. They have a goal. There's a there's a common director. Yeah. Uh, and there's a, and, and and one of them isn't just a rehash of one of the other movies. You mean two of them aren't just rehashes, rehashes of other movies. movies. <laughs>
Oh, geez. Uh, anyways, uh, moving on. By the way, Alex Carr says now's a good time to thank. What's happening right now? Moving oh, he's moving, he's moving furniture and put his feet up over here. Hold on. I think I got a wide shot of that. Yeah, there right. he is lounging. I think you can see him as feet just disappearing behind the monitor there you go he's wiggling them um I, the, uh, alex wants to remind us that now's a good time to thank heel bradley for supporting occupyprowrestling.com on patreon so there you go Spread and rise around, and our right? rise patreon and a rise patreon of course Thanks, yes, bradley, there you go. this is the coronavirus shake <laughs> <laughs> what do you get with the rise patreon like uh, exclusive content yeah uh, mm-hmm. newsletters mm-hmm. Cool. Um, uh, you get our wasn't there priority seating or something? Priority yeah. seating. Um, yeah. All right. You get. Um, uh, I know this week we right before the show. I think like a day or two early, we posted our hype videos beforehand. You get access to those. Nice. Uh, exclusive interviews. Newsletter. News. Yeah, a lot of. <laughs> well, oh, come what the on. hell is happening? Oh, we're decorating the uh, oh, oh. Farnsworth Investment Ultra Big Manager. Money. Big money. Look at that! And you gave him a <laughs> weapon. You gave him a kendo <laughs> stick. <laughs> Show. Oh, it's gonna he get violent! This is his oh scepter. boy! Oh, the scepter is the, it's the, by the way that is referred to in Mayhem lore as the Kabuki stick. By the way, Kabuki okay. stick. Yes, it's the Kabuki stick. Okay, that's uh. And Who named is. that? Um, somebody who's not around anymore. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I know what that means. <laughs> oh no, no no he just stopped watching wrestling and got a job. Oh, oh no, yeah. I, I no, thought we. Had, I, I, thought you, I thought you. I thought you retconned he that. Stopped. No, 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 no. You're He's just, dead. There's only one person that we had to retcon. Okay. So yeah, yeah. I've been he I've been around for some retcon. Stop <laughs> watching wrestling and got a job. As if we're all just jobless losers. <laughs> hey, like you know what? Us. Some people. Some people can get a job by watching wrestling. Uh, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's what I hear. Some people can not do a, that. Not a good one. <laughs> <laughs> not a good one. Well, well, debatable. I mean, it's an okay it's one. It has some fringe benefits or something, right? I mean, yeah, I, I, th- I think right. if you have to watch enough TNA, you do get brain damage. Uh, yeah, that too. That <laughs> oh too. no, that's absolutely <laughs> true. I can attest to that. Yeah. So can my therapist. <laughs> All right. Anyways, <laughs> professional wrestling. There was something that happened this week, and including some stuff in a chamber. Um, Ooh. so and we did the not 46 go, chamber. The, no, no, not that oh, one. Okay, no, that okay. one. All right. Sorry. Wow. Wow. That's that uh, got dark. <laughs> I don't know what's going on on TV. We did have the last al- time I watched wrestling. The, uh, the one match just had red lights the entire time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not much has changed. Yeah. No, well, I mean, there weren't, there weren't red lights, but there were cages and there were uh, okay. women in the main event. Whoa. And uh, there was uh, a former MMA person uh, whooping everybody's ass again. Cool. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, one Shayna Baszler, of course, uh, tore up the Elimination Chamber. Really seemed like a repeat of the first half of Royal Rumble uh, in this one. But, uh, I, I mean, for, for somebody who it's her introduction to the main, quote, main roster and uh, and, uh, and setting her up for WrestleMania, it was pretty good. As soon as she got in, she just tore through everybody. And it, we like waited like five minutes for the next people down the line for the last three and, of the chambers. And I think, I think we learned a lot of Japanese curse words from Asuka. Oh, did we? <laughs> I'm guessing. I don't know. Hey. Well, what is happening? So- Easy peasy. <laughs> <laughs> there is so this this I, I remember back when we used to talk about lucha underground um i i i, I think we, we we stated that wwe will never just let somebody speak in in spanish on their show they still don't but they're well, they kind of are more and but we are getting like three minute promos entirely in yelling japanese oh that was yes. great that was i i dozed off a little bit as i didn't make the the wrap up last night uh, because I'd been up for a couple states, um, and uh, and and I woke up to just Japanese yelling, and I thought <laughs> I was still having a nightmare. The, um, that might be my favorite. The one from last night mm-hmm. might be my favorite promo. I've there was a yeah. lot of gesturing. There was a lot and of then every now and then just a little English, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just a little to make you think, oh, I, I clearly you, didn't you, understand any of that. You get the point across. How how is your arm? It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I've had this argument for years of whether or not, like, early on in his career, Eddie Guerrero was actually, was good at promos or he would just get regularly confused and start speaking in Spanish. Because <laughs> you would watch Eddie and he would, like, go into something and then all of a sudden just go right into Spanish and, mm-hmm. then, and then come back oh. out with a good line. And it was like, yeah, he, just, he, would he just loses the train line. of thought and just go like, ah, Spanish. Mm-hmm. He would mm-hmm. usually say the same line in Spanish and then say it in English. Yeah, but it doesn't mm-hmm. seem like that was that, a good Conan promo. did that, too. Yeah, I don't think Conan was a good promo. Well, Conan was a no, good catchphrase. No, he phrase. wasn't. Conan was a good catchphrase. Conan was, yeah, yeah. Conan was a catchphrase. I had to explain to my, I had to explain to my wife because she didn't understand uh, '90s wrestling catchphrases. 
like at all because she like she doesn't watch wrestling. And she, mm-hmm. and she's kind of we got a, we got a around. big dose of them. I noticed Saturday night, <laughs> so a lot of Razor Ramon happening. So like I was telling her, and it was like, uh, no, no, like if you didn't say your catchphrase, mm-hmm. people were actively fucking pissed. Mm-hmm. Like you needed mm-hmm. to hear all the catchphrases. And she's like, well, like what are catchphrases now? And I'm like, ah, not really. Uh, There's like one or two, may- one or two maybe. Mm-hmm. There's not a whole lot, but like literally everyone had a catchphrase and they had to say it, and you had to like do the promo. Mm-hmm. Bef- like there were so many promos, and the whole crowd would say it. I mean, the closest. Yeah. I mean, the closest thing don't you have is is Paul Heyman, yeah, the- like saying the defending, reigning, yeah. uh, you know, the, the whole Brock Lesnar. <laughs> A couple, there are a couple catchphrases. Uh, yeah, but it's not as heavily new, as it was. The New Day has about four or yeah, so. Yeah. so. Yeah. It's not as heavy as it was in like mm-hmm. 1997. Mm-hmm. I would like that catchphrase that like wraps it up too. Like, I'm mm-hmm. gonna yeah, it like 97 yeah. had like a whole preamble and then a whole catchphrase <laughs> end, and like it was like, and everyone had one. Like, like up and down the cart, like Val Venus had one. Like, mm-hmm. like literally everyone mm-hmm. was having hey, one. Hey, he has Let a new catchphrase now. <laughs> so, <laughs> how did you know Val Venus was in he my head? He interviews a couple yeah. luchadors for three minutes, and now he thinks <laughs> <laughs> No, I think Val, Val's catchphrase is the same as it was back then, only the word ladies is in quotes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Yeah, because he's a terrible person. <laughs> so uh, I mean, I don't know. If this I, I got in, by a... the way, I got into my first argument with Val Venus. On what? <laughs> like you and everybody else. Oh, whoa, whoa, we need to hear this. Okay, one. okay. Have, this. have you guys not gotten into an argument with Val Venus? No, I haven't online? tried to. <laughs> uh, I, I and I also just book you guys to defend intergender wrestling. No, it wasn't about that. Uh, I got into it into it with about uh, taxation. Oh, he believes, oh yeah because he believes that all taxation is uh is theft and it's illegal yeah uh and i got into it like just like not into it into it but i was just like i was like well like george washington def- definitely disagrees with you uh and <laughs> and then post- never beat, though? and then posted a link to the, the British Whiskey rebellion uh and was like <laughs> and he was like and he just got into it with me it was on one of danny cage's posts and i think that was the problem because danny cage and val venus get to do it like every day <laughs> Wow. Like actively, every and you just kind of got into the crossfire. Yeah, so like I wonder, like do do do. What's this conversation? Valvinus is like internet presence is kind of wild because mm-hmm. he's like super pro pot, mm-hmm. but also like super pro Trump, and it's a real <laughs> weird huh. line he's walking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but like he I, will I actively get argued. That, one. I believe we call that kid rocking. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's being an American badass is what it's called. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no, I, no, kid, rocking up and down your block to whip the ball. Come on, he nothing. is. All right. All right. Yeah. So anyway, uh, do yourself a favor. Get into an argument with Val Venus. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has an assignment to get in an argument with Val Venus and report back he's next week. Very easy to find. Let's all me. let's all tweet him right now, and the first one he responds to wins. <laughs> just, just, just. It's very easy to get a hold of. He has nothing going winning. on. Yes. <laughs> Trust me. Oh, jeez. I remember I was really confused when he was, uh, I believe, like a 2010, 2011 Legends show, and he came out in like MMA shorts. That makes sense. And uh, and and did some uh, motivational speaking afterwards cool. after the main event. Cool, cool, yeah. cool, cool, yeah. cool, cool, cool. Things yeah. are going great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was ten years ago. Yeah, so, that's yeah. What I mean. yeah. that was ten years ago. <laughs> it's been a long ten years for everybody. No, I think he owns like a uh, like a marijuana dis- dispensary oh, yeah, I think or so. something yeah, now. Yeah. Um, which I mean, why wouldn't you give Val Venus one of those? <laughs> why wouldn't you sign that what, over? I can think of a number of reasons. He was a, I mean, he was a chief for a while, so I mean, he he did hold a <laughs> management position. Hey, that didn't work for Elizabeth Warren. It's not oh, okay. Oh, Matt Paul just showed. Oh, Matt Paul just showed. Oh, oh, <laughs> happy election oh, season. Get off the stage. I can say that I donated money to our campaign. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I did. I can say that several of my friends are Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh wait, wait, wrestling. Yes, okay. wrestling. So, so explain to me what happens in, a, in an elimination chamber. Wait, wait, wait. Don't... Well, you know, <laughs> wait, well, you've never <laughs> seen an elimination chamber. Wait, I, I, saw the, them I saw the one, I saw the one where Shawn Michaels didn't have his tights finished. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's the same thing. Okay. Same, same thing, thing. Same thing. Nothing's okay. changed. Yeah. If no, no. you same hear thing. the name, you the, just the chamber is a, a little toilet. bit taller and a little bit safer. That's okay. about more than yeah. There's shape. like there's padding on the sides now instead oh, of right. instead of just a grate that everybody good. that's falls and people on. can get people can actually get thrown out of the chamber through the Lexan pods. Right, yes. Do you get eliminated if you do that? No. Nope. 
Cool. So what's the point of the chamber? Uh, but lots of metal to get thrown into. And all fair, the, it and, was a very large man. And, and, and all the awesome. camera angles are awkward. I, so, uh, look, look I, I'm, I'm definitely playing dumb, but I've watched my fair share of Elimination Chambers. Okay. I've actually, the thing about the pods always bother me because it's like this pod and you're stuck in here and then everyone just flies through them anyway. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, okay, so what's the point of the pod? Didn't Natalia get thrown through one? Yeah. Like It's like, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, Otis ran through but it's one. Like, what's but... the point? It's like uh, you know, like when they have those things where it's like, well, they're gonna have a steel cage match to keep everyone out, and then the guys just climb over the steel cage and get in. You're like, what's the point of the cage then? Like, it's oh. defeating the purpose mm-hmm. that you've designed it for, which is to hold it's people. Storytelling. Well, there was also a lot of climbing on the cage. Uh, Lindsay Dorado. I'm fine with that. I mean, Lindsay Dorado like and scaled. You can stop people from climbing in. Velveteen yeah. Dream did that. Yeah, I mean, let's say Dorado like scaled and like hung from the top but and is, did a. Flip. Is it the point? Of the chamber mm-hmm. to keep people in, and uh, in the no, chamber. I, I don't think there's any uh, no, no, pretense in, of keeping people in, in or the, out of the in, elimination chamber. In the right? actual pod, you're mm-hmm. not allowed to get out till the time expires. Yeah. Right. So the point of the pod is to keep you in there until time expires. Right. right. But if people can just fly through pods. What's the point of the pod? Well, yeah, wait, 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 wait. You can throw somebody else through a pod. Okay. But if you're in the pod, you're not busting yourself out of the pod. Yeah. I think Braun Strowman yeah. busts himself out of a pod. Uh, he can probably bust himself out of the pod. <laughs> yes. But I'm. But we like had it. tag matches That's and women's matches pod, this time. Hold on. If you're in the pod, why would you want to bust out early? Because it's more time for the other people in the match. To beat the shit out of each other. I'm not. I'm not saying that you would want. Because to. Because otherwise, Oscar could have busted herself out of the. Pod. Yeah, I'm not we... saying you would want to. I'm saying they should make the pod stronger. Then, mm-hmm. if the point of it is to hey, keep people he's in reinforced pod. Lexan. Yes, I, yes. You don't get. You don't get stronger. By than the that. way, what the <laughs> fuck is Lexan? No one knows. So. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the glass. That's what is... Eric Bischoff told me in 2002. I mean, and I believe him. The, the, the glass is strong enough. It just seems to be like held to the sides of the chamber with like duct tape. Basically. Yeah, it's, it's Velcro. <laughs> yeah. The glass never breaks. No. Like, Although but it, I just, have to it pops say, right out. So I have to say, the coolest spot of the chamber this year was when Shayna Baszler just kept slamming the door into Natty's sternum. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh my God. That looked. <laughs> Violent and terrible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was great, <laughs> and it happened to I, Natty. So. I think that the glass oh. in the chamber is made out of the same thing that they tried to make the ice in Batman Robin. On uh, that that was like waving back and oh, forth. Yeah, it's it's probably a very similar. Um, I also material. Have, I also have a big problem with the War Games pod, the shark cage. And I want to explain that. You know, like when they do the War Games, they have the people on the stage, and they're staying in the and shark cage. Yes. Pod. Yes. Okay, because like the heels, like. They have a referee come over, then they unlock the door, and they let one guy out, and it's yes. like, mm-hmm. those heels could just blow by that referee. Right. And they don't. <laughs> and, and, and you're not like, getting disqualified. No. No. And it's like, why aren't they doing that? Yeah. Yeah. You should make that individual pods. There's been things like that where somebody would just, like, double up like, in always, the history of war games, right? So this is weird because, like, because of my position, I always think of the thing of, like, especially with heels, of, like, how would Shirley Doe take advantage of this and ruin it? Because <laughs> he's he'll find a way to go like, well, I would just do this. You go like, yeah, you, you would just do that. I mean, he he um, I mean, he he was really inventive in a but, in a pull apart situation Saturday, where I'm just like, <laughs> wait a minute, why is he like he's like in the pull apart, but he's instigating the yeah, pull apart yeah. to happen during the pull apart he, like, and the fans. He feels- should always be doing the dirtiest, nastiest, worst things and breaking every rule possible. Yeah. And if they can find a way to get a shortcut and break a rule, they're going to do it. Mm-hmm. And so to stand there and be like, well, I'll wait my turn while the referee shuts this door and relocks it mm-hmm. is crazy to me for real. They should just well, kick that uh, referee right in the face and very similar. Right very similarly, we had a no DQ match between AJ Styles and Aleister Black. The OC was at ringside. Cool. Right. They should just jump him and beat yeah, the out of him. Yeah, and they did it at the end. Well, uh, why wait? They, they, they did it after like 20 <laughs> minutes of a great match, why right? Why wait? Beat him up. It would have been better served if AJ had said to Anderson and Gallows, I don't need you guys in this match. Sure. Yeah, yeah there's no respect thing up. happening. There's yeah. more uh, just I'm better for you than you, and we're going to beat you up. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I yeah. would get that, but otherwise, they should just beat him up. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm with you. Like, I'm, ju- I'm, just, I'm just saddened that Alistair Black didn't sit cross-legged in the middle of the ring and summon the Undertaker, and he just showed up randomly with runes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, 
if we have all those fucking candles lit, it better summon the goddamn Undertaker. The problem is the Undertaker is such a complex demon. Yeah. No, like I don't know that anyone truly understands the magic to summon the Undertaker. I outside I of outside of Vince McMahon. Oh, I do. You just have to say Mich- 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 except, except for uh, Mohammed bin Salman. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> you say Michelle Michael three times into a mirror and he will appear. Yeah. Yeah. Mohammed bin Salman, the, the Saudi prince, knows how to summon the Undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> and Shawn Michaels apparently. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's it's called a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> just to um, just just to just to pile on with what Farnsworth just said, you know, it's very hard to summon the Undertaker. I mean, remember like John Cena like tried like everything for like weeks and weeks and weeks. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. WrestleMania. Yeah, the conditions have yeah. to be just right. Apparently, it involves beating up Elias. You have to beat up Elias. Yeah, and then uh, uh, look, it the takes one Elias, a frog's ear, right. <laughs> yeah. two pigs' noses. <laughs> yeah. Like and bolt, you know. and uh, Braun Strowman's eight-year-old tag partner from WrestleMania. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. What was hey, his, I can't hey, his name. Lord, Nicholas? Was Nicholas? Nicholas? Yeah, something like that. He was that. 10. He was 10? I'm sorry. He was 10. And that kid. And they were never beaten. No, and that kid uh, yeah. turned out to be Dominic Rey Mysterio's son. <laughs> Oh, I thought it was not Dominic. No, it's not. I thought it was Marco's son. Thought it was Marco's son. That, Are we required to have a Dominic joke every two weeks? Is that what's happening right now? <laughs> That's who he is. I, I thought it was Marco Stunt. Mm. I was close. Okay. okay. Uh, since we're talking about The Undertaker, Tina Keys made a very good suggestion. Can we talk about the uh, AJ Styles Undertaker promo last night? Uh, the Michelle McCool. The one that Marcus didn't see. No, okay, I, okay. I did not watch it. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, real quick. Had I known The Undertaker uh, was going to be on the show. Well, I mean, he here, wasn't. Here, here's, here's, uh, he here, will be here, in Pittsburgh Monday. Here's your key talking points for AJ Styles warming up the uh, the Undertaker match for WrestleMania. <laughs> Calls him Mark Calloway in the ring during cool. the promo. Cool. Did right. he say Calloway or let's, Galloway? I don't know what he said. Close enough. Let's, <laughs> the, gonna, no. let's out that he's Are married dr- to. Or a god. Let's out that Undertaker's married to Michelle McCool. Just like puts that out there. Not that, yeah. you know, obviously. All this means is that he people. watched the Stone Cold session with. And uh, then, <laughs> and it just it just means AJ subscribes to the network. Really, all you have to do is literally go to Michelle McCool's Instagram, and then to cap things off. AJ literally says, and I'm paraphrasing, so I guess it's not what he literally said, but the point is, he said the Undertaker's going to die in the ring at WrestleMania. No, at his no he actually did say that. Okay, then I did his, say that. His literally point, he literally did said say that. This. His point was basically that the Undertaker is killing himself out there, that Michelle McCool is pulling his strings and getting the Undertaker to do anything that he wants, that she wants. And that, uh, he, and he was going to die in the ring. Who's getting who's getting the heat here, Michelle McCool? Yeah, <laughs> which is really funny. Who's which is really Michelle funny McCool because versus AJ Styles for Mayhem Mania. Don't, there you go. There don't you go. ruin the <laughs> don't ruin the swerve there where Michelle McCool runs off with AJ now. It's I, really what? funny because if you look What's at Wendy Carl Anderson's say? wife on Twitter, mm-hmm. Carl Anderson's wife is like, "Oh, you can wrestle another Saudi show. We need another pool." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's I, probably the exact same conversation that's happening at my, the end. Uh, my, my, the favorite, the, my favorite Carl Anderson line ever is someone like tweeted him like, hey, man, you're just like, you're underutilized and they don't appreciate you. You should jump ship and go to AEW. Yeah. And Carl Anderson goes, you know what I really appreciate? The four wheelers I just bought. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he's making money. Let yeah, him go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, Let mm-hmm. him go. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, so, that's, so it's... So AJ was there in the, in the ring, like with his phone, like looking through Undertaker's Wikipedia, and just pointing out, "Oh, I see this, I see this. Oh, there's your wife. See what is? Mm. What is? I don't get. It. I didn't watch it, so I don't want to criticize it because, like, I hate doing that stuff where it's like hearing it second and third hand and being like, "Well, this is dumb," but like, it sounds pretty dumb. Well, I mean, and I'm, pretty, I'm usually a pretty decent like defender of WWE, so like. I don't know. I, I thought it was a good it AJ a good has segment. a way of it making stuff segment. work. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, he's mm-hmm. gotten to that point. But even then, it's like kind of like getting to the point of like, do we really need I mean, do we remember we, the, the last whole point angle of, this? Of, of AJ Styles and, and wives and mm-hmm. DNA? Like, uh, they, just, they oh, tried yeah. like eight different versions of it in DNA and none of it worked. Well, well, and also uh, Samoa Joe and uh, Wendy and, and Wendy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, Wendy! Yeah. <laughs> I just, I like. What 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 makes me want to watch that match is Undertaker versus AJ Styles. I don't need the call no, back to the no, Instagram. No, to get me excited the, for the it. The whole point of the match know? is how good of a match can AJ Styles get out of the Undertaker? It's mm-hmm. like it, it, it's like some sort of like um legend test for AJ. You know, can you get it's like that, three plus stars? It's that high end legend Xbox achievement. Yeah. Uh, so. 
It's can you wrestle a broomstick that oh, can choke slam you? Yeah. It's yeah. a can he be the first guy since CM Punk to get like a really great WrestleMania match out of the Undertaker? Yeah. Because yeah. that's think, how long it's been. Uh, I wouldn't put CM Punk match up there that highly. Uh, mm. ooh, ooh. Hey, hey, I don't even hear that. Yeah. I, I did. I just. I don't remember it. Exactly. Oh, okay. Well, I, guess anyway, I, I actually, well, I really, I actually mistaken. really like the story of Taker and Reigns, but that's just me. Um, anyway, uh, I think what the problem with the Undertaker is, uh, in a in a wrestling concept, is uh, I, I don't, I want to not dance around this, but kind of dance around this, in that I think he still wants to be the Undertaker so badly. Mm-hmm. that he's not willing to take that half step back to have a better match. Mm-hmm. Like, I think he still goes like, man, I can do this. I can have that five-star match when like him trying to have a five-star match is him having like a two-star match. But mm-hmm. if he just tried to have like a three-star match, he'd well, be fine. Do you, like he doesn't, you know? do you think like he doesn't want to have like, like, oh, okay. So, so when Ric Flair was winding down, he yeah. had like the story of like Ric Flair, is he washed up? You know, he should retire. He probably will. Like, do you think The Undertaker is like, could you, if you're like an undead wrestling zombie who can't be killed, <laughs> yeah. you can't really do that story. Yeah. Yeah. Or get married, but <laughs> if part of you, that was see, all the canon. Thing. Like, I think The Undertaker would have been able to have better matches if they paired him with younger talent. Like, they keep putting him with the the DXs and like, this, but this other- casket match with Rusev? Was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, okay. So Rusev mm-hmm. is great. Rusev is different. I think like AJ is a good match from. I think when we say like younger talent, I think the big issue is they want to move quicker and they got a bigger gas tank and that is a guy. And the Undertaker's not the type of guy to go like, "Well, I'm not going to keep up." Like he's going to try and push himself too. Yeah. Yeah, so there's yeah. that double edged sword of like, I'm not saying put him in there with Ricochet. But if you get him in oh, there yeah. with someone who's young and who can go, and he's going to be like, you know what, I'm going to go too, and it's like, oh yeah, I can't. I can't I would do love that. To see him in there with like, ricochet. You gotta be that's, like that's the thing. I would love to see him in there with ricochet. If I Taker worked, would... if Taker stood in, in the center and did his Taker match, yeah, it'd be mm-hmm. good. But if Taker all of a sudden is like, I'm gonna do my dives too, it's like, okay, we gotta, we gotta, <laughs> we have to have a conversation. So, anyway, did we talk about the pay per view? We we kind of did. Okay, cool. mostly. Yeah. I mean, we we expected. There wasn't that much, much that happened on it. <laughs> There was enough. Daniel, oh, there Daniel was enough. Bryan, Daniel Bryan, and Drew Gulak. Oh, let's talk about that for yeah. a second. Holy crap, that was great. Jesus. Jeez. Very, very good match. I did, Man, I, did, I did not see it. If you want a reminder <laughs> of what wrestling is in WWE that's not on NXT, that was it. Oh. Does uh, anyone have an update on Daniel Bryan's neck? The, the, uh, well, is, was... it, is it a stack of Lego pieces that have been knocked over? <sighs> well, I don't know so much about that. And just to bring Marcus up to speed, uh, there was a point during the match where... Uh, Drew Gulak decided to give uh, Daniel Bryan a really big German suplex, and Daniel Bryan basically landed right on his head. Cool. Mm. Yeah. And so afterwards, they. Uh, That's they, not dangerous they, for the guy who had no, uh, I mean, neck well, and brain injuries. Th- the funny part is that, like, like, after the match. a kid. <laughs> They interview him backstage, and they're like, uh, how you doing, Daniel? And he's like, I feel alive. And I'm like, <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Mar- Marcus, the story was that in a couple of matches b- between Daniel Bryan and some other wrestlers, Drew Gulak was was coaching the other wrestlers, saying, I know all of these holes in Daniel Bryan's game. Yeah, And yeah. he's trying to help these other wrestlers. And the other wrestlers kept losing, so Drew had the match with Bryan. But Drew kept on figuring out uh, Daniel Bryan's moves and figuring out holes in his game right there. And then all these things kept falling apart for Daniel Bryan during the match. I would watch that. So that that was good. I would watch it. It was yeah. good. It was like it was nice, tight. You know, how yeah. long was it? Like fifteen? Mm. 15 oh yeah, 15, yeah, yeah, like a good yeah. time. Nice. Kicked good. off good the show and good. in front of a Philadelphia mm-hmm. crowd. So I would, I would, yeah, yeah, like there's. Here's, here's the problem with WWE right now, and it, it has nothing to do with the storylines or the in-ring work, because I still, like, appreciate all of it. Mm-hmm. God damn, it's just so much wrestling. And it's just, like, it's just so much. And I feel like I can take a, take the accelerator off WWE for, like, a week or two mm-hmm. and come back and still be fine. Yeah. You know? Yeah. like And that I hate to say that, but, like, you don't miss a whole lot when you miss a week but or two. I think that's by, that's by design, though. It is. It is. Because that's the speed of the audience that you're trying yeah. to capture. Yeah. Because they want to make sure if you were, like, I tune into WWE once a month. Cool. Are you still going to tune in for WrestleMania? Yeah. 
right? And, and that's, I mean, that's their big market, and that's what mm-hmm. they're looking for. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's, I think so, it's easier to do that. So it's hard for us to be like, like, I keep missing SmackDown just because of life. Yeah. Because from a Fridays on Fridays, tough. and now it's like, well, I, I wish I could see what Elias did. Yeah. But it's okay that I didn't, right? I, I DVR Raw every week, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden I'll go in there and I'll have like four Raws, and I'll be like, just delete them. You're not. Gonna yeah. Watch yeah. This. Like we're talking about like catch, catch up. Catch up on the next yeah, one. Yeah. Catch up on the next one. Yeah. I gave up last time. I'm like, then I'll watch this in the morning. It's fine. There, yeah. there are so many reviews of these uh, shows. Like I, I watch uh, Watt Culture's ups and downs. Yes. For every Raw and SmackDown, and that pretty much is like your well, Cliff's notes of the show. Here's my problem with that, because if 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 because now you're you're dependent on that voice. Mm-hmm. and everything every review i hear uh, you know remember reading about a raw or somebody said oh i read this happened on raw like you have yeah. it's like reading a text message you're going to apply the voice that you want to it be like what an asshole when the guy you know didn't really mean it um i think that happens in these reviews unless a puppet is telling me a review of a show which i love um oh by the way who is brian alvarez <laughs> a puppet like I legit don't know who he is. Really? He's um he's with <laughs> us. Oh, the shows like them. AEW. He wrestled for a second. He, yeah, uh, he wrestled Larry Sweeney. Okay, it's I know Larry Sweeney. I, okay. I remember well, filming I that. I don't match. remember that match yeah. particularly, but like why is why is why is this guy important? He's with He's uh, uh, I mean, Dave Meltzer's second in command basically. Uh, okay. Mm. See, I I I grew up in a um Wade Keller household. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. Like we had, we all like, discuss our dirt sheet upbringings. Now? Yeah, like I had, we had PW Torch. Like yeah. I was a Torch kid. Like I was never an Observer kid. I Even to this date, like I don't follow Meltzer online subscribe. or anything because I don't, like I don't understand the appeal of him. But like I, because I, I think I just because I grew up on PW Torch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think Meltzer's probably the yardstick as far as writing about wrestling and biggest issue is that Meltzer knows he's the yardstick yeah when it comes to writing about wrestling and it just Meltzer can't get out of the way of being Dave Meltzer (laughs) (laughs) if if he could yeah he'd he'd be great but I've Mm -hmm. seen a lot of like Brian Alvarez showing up like and obviously for for not good reasons like Mm -hmm. they were like this guy's crazy and I like watch some of the stuff and I'm like oh this guy is like like He's just trying to be Howard Stern, kind mm-hmm. of, in that, like, mm-hmm. oh, if I say this, people will watch. Yeah. And it's like, or you'll just. No, get... that's Brad Shepard. <laughs> is that who it is? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, like, I don't know who any of these people are because I don't. I, Brad, I also, like, Brad did... Shepard is so bad that the WWE on Fox official Instagram account mm-hmm. said, don't listen to this guy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, wait, that's the guy that was putting out the one story? And they're yeah. like, this is completely false and stupid. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. So, like, yeah. I made a commitment, I think, in, like, 2004, 2005 to not reading wrestling rumors or spoilers or dirt sheets. Mm-hmm. And it's, it was the greatest decision I ever made in my life. Mm-hmm. Like, I stopped reading all of it and just, like, okay, I'll just watch the show. It ruins it. It ruins it. Yeah. It really does. Because, like, I was really, really bitter about, like, maybe it was later than that. Yeah. No, it was around then. I got really, really bitter about, like, the, the raw Triple H run where they gave him the belt. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember reading all the stuff about Triple H and, and I was just so mad about the shows. And I was like, he's like this show's garbage and like and then like i stopped reading it all and i started like enjoying the shows mm-hmm. and it was like way better uh, the, yeah we uh, had, See, had that that's weird because i don't read anything and i still hated that time <laughs> <laughs> i am by the way i am dead set and i have i love those ruthless aggression documentaries mm-hmm. they are some oh, of yeah. the best thing that they put out yeah. and i absolutely love They're- them no one can say that the WWE doesn't understand how to put out an amazing video. Yeah. Oh my god, I forgot about that, Jen. Hmm? I forgot about. That. Apparently, we sat next to Brian Alvarez at Mania in New Orleans. Yeah, I said hi to him afterwards. <laughs> nice. I completely forgot about that. Had hey. I known, hey, I, guy, I don't know. One. Hey, I, 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 I don't, I don't know, know who he is. You know what? I, I, I was an Observer subscriber Look, for a little while. Yeah. Um, I pulled the plug because they were spoiling Lucha Underground for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I let Meltzer know about it, and then I, and I canceled Look, on him. But I think I, I, I will po- defend Brian. I think he's a pretty funny guy. I mean. You got to use your own brain. Yeah. I mean, so. well, he's more important than I'll ever be, and that's you know whatever. I don't give a crap. But like, his voice is very. very I I feel like there's a wrestling review voice, and and like as you said, like Meltzer can kind of get that way. So I feel it's very toxic to fans because then fans start thinking that way. I hate when I hate when fans talk to me about something that happened and they sound like a dirt sheet. Yeah. Yeah, because mm-hmm. it's just like it's 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 giving um agency to the fans to. 
think what they they know what's going on behind the scenes when a lot of that is so yeah. filtered and probably made up if not by the person writing it but by, by whoever's, whatever whoever's this, leaking it yeah just because it's from a source doesn't mean it's news or yeah. there's so many stories and a lot of it that is one just, of those things of like and i hate to say this but like the leaked stuff is a lot of like guy x wants a push so he's saying to dirt sheet oh, rider yeah. b i'm not getting a push yeah. so that that gets leaked and that you know what i mean it's like mm. one of those it's all that unless there's like a tweet from the wrestler saying x i don't care mm-hmm. Sorry. so um, and and honestly, like, I, I have a rule. I don't know if you're 40 right or right sorry, right. sorry, sorry, I'm setting up and trying to get Mike a voice, too. I, so. I, I, I have a rule that I don't want anyone over 40 involved in televised wrestling. That includes dirt sheets. <laughs> because a lot of their wow. views are a lot of their views are not very Mike, great. Mike, Mike, does that mean you're not going to be a part of this show in two years? When uh... Sorg, I might not be. When one of us uh, turns and the corner, televised wrestling. I am televised not podcasting. Um, I, mean, I am not a part of talking about wrestling. televised wrestling. Um, I think there's. Are you going to be? You're going to have to start your own podcast because you can't work with me. I'm 47. Do I have to go home now? <laughs> I, know, I think there's a I think there's a value value in those voices. <laughs> I think there's a value in explaining to people, hey, this is what is X or this is what is Y, because I learned a, a lot that way. But it has shaped fans in a very very divisive way. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've talked about this a little bit of like um, my obsession with fan or this fans obsession with uh, quote unquote move sets. That I think is really, really <laughs> bad. We're like, so you'll go like, man, this guy's a really good wrestler, and they like, what's he doesn't do any moves. There's no moves, and you're like, what are you talking about like that's not part of this. And like this mm-hmm. idea that like, if a guy only does two moves, he can't be good. Well, it's like I have the conversation with Mike all the time, especially on the Monday Night Show, where you know, there's, did you enjoy the show you saw in front of you instead of worrying about? what's happening next month yeah. or down the line oh this guy had a really good night it's like great but they're not gonna do anything with him tomorrow it's like well who cares but who cares did so, you enjoy tonight so, so like i was like when i when i talk about like the shows that i run like the next day i get a bunch of texts from wrestlers mm-hmm. I, can you can you be notes on my match and i like let me watch the show mm-hmm. uh and then as soon as i get the show the first thing i do is i watch the show and i go through every segment and i go was it entertaining because mm-hmm. as you go that seems like the lowest bar that you need to clear. Yeah. But you have yeah. to clear that bar. Yeah. And so like, I think people should view wrestling that way. You should watch a segment and go like, was it entertaining? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes or no. If yes, then okay. Now we can start talking about but, X, Y, and Z. But, but entertaining mm-hmm. is different things for different people. Like, right. Yeah. Like, like no, <laughs> um, but I'm no, just you're saying. Right. You're right. Because a lot of people perceived entertaining different ways. Like, I am a story guy. I don't see a lot of stories happening on Raw. When mm-hmm. I do, I point them out. When mm-hmm. I see the same matches over and over and over and over again, that doesn't entertain me, no matter how good the match is. Yeah. It's like this match is happening for no reason. The problem I, with, the problem I think that happens with Raw is story is happening, but there are minute things that are hidden after a three segment match. Yeah. That, that you that, it's yeah. not is there's no emphasis on it so whoever is putting it together I, writing it is like well, hey sure. i mean hey sure. we're moving we're hey we're moving the bar but to us as fans we're just like i just watched another thir- you know yeah. 15 and, minutes and of sure. the same but match see again. those minute things you know they're not good yeah. we we followed rowan with his fucking cage <laughs> for two and a half GD months, Sorg. Mm-hmm. Did you we enjoy finally it? Finally, got the reveal of this last week, mm-hmm. and it was and a, it was a toy spider. Which okay, fine, but if you're gonna run with that, fucking run with it instead of crushing it with some stairs. Mm-hmm. So that's why I, a lot of people. My don't heart warm up broke when thing. that spider died. I wanna, if I, guess, <laughs> I, if I guess swing this to an interesting story that I heard one time, and I, I may have told the story before. I don't remember. Uh, with um, uh, Jeff Loeb, I heard him on a podcast one time, and Jeff Loeb is a very famous comic book writer, uh, and he worked on Lost. Mm-hmm. And remember, there was an interview he's, with him. He ran Marvel TV for. He's, several he's years. a brilliant, brilliant mm-hmm. yeah. man. He and was EP he, on Heroes, I think. Yeah. Uh, he'd left Lost yep. to work on Heroes. Mm-hmm. So he was yep. he was on Lost and they were interviewing him and they go like, hey man, can you like give us a little like spoilers on Lost? And he's like, no, I can't do anything. And they go like, well, let's know. Like, what's this smoke monster? Like, what is it? And he goes, <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know. And they're like, like, no, but tell us. He's like, no, literally, I don't know. 
none of us know. We're writing it as we go. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't know what the thing is. We just thought it was cool, so we put it in the show. Mm -hmm. And that happens more than you think it does. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. There's two types of writing. There's there's plotting and pantsing. Plotting is, uh, anyone watch Game of Thrones? Mm -hmm. George R.R. Martin? Plotting. Mm -hmm. A lot of seeds being laid over a long period of time and stuff like that. Pantsing is, like, post books game of thrones but they're like just write it like just what happens next and you just fly by the seat of your pants and you can see the difference you can see the like, huge massive difference between plotting and pantsing mm-hmm. some people were really great at pantsing some people are really great at writing that stuff on the seat of their like seat of their pants just write something entertaining or there's like the first f- first four seasons of super uh, supernatural and then they're like hey we're gonna do 10 more yeah. yeah so like most tv is kind of pantsing of just like you know you know we watch those episodes and they're like Oh, they're doing a bottle episode because they're just writing. Okay, we just write yeah, this thing. Yeah. So, plus there's a lot of filler when you have to fill 24 episodes. Wrestling is very, very similar in that like you get into plotting and you go like, okay, we're gonna lay this down and we're gonna do this, and then all of a sudden like things change, things move, and you go like, screw it, right? Throw it all out and start over and just write something and get it out, out yeah. there. So like I think that's wrestling's biggest issue, but like WWE specifically is very pants deep writing. Mm-hmm. it's very yeah. like let's just throw something out there this week mm-hmm. um and if you hear stories from backstage it's it's definitely like that where they have four or five copies of a script floating around and you'll like get into a segment and they're like not the green script grab the blue script now and it's like oh what i have four of these mm-hmm. like that's how they write they just it's it's not conducive to that show but for some reason they make millions of dollars <laughs> So it, it, it works somewhere yeah, along but, the line. Yeah, but they make the millions of dollars before anyone actually watches the product. Sure, it, it's, yeah. not, it's not. It's mer- not. It's not merit based. It's well. That's not exactly. Uh, it's I mean, ma- what is? I, 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 like the way that they earned the money, but they earned the money. So I mean, what yeah. is what is merit based in entertainment? I, I mean, yeah, exactly. Uh, but, but, so, so let me roll it back for a second uh, because I watched the video. I can't remember who posted it, but they're like my 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 daughter watching pro wrestling for the first time live up in probably the mid cheap seats uh watching the thing and like their moves are happening and this girl is like losing her mind it's a house show it's like your standard mm-hmm. stuff you know what's happening that's why they're making millions of dollars oh yeah 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 that is oh yeah no and that is i mean we're we are not we there, say there, whatever, there's, you know. there's a really famous or a really really good interview with um freddie prince jr uh about uh star wars mm-hmm. uh, where he talks about like People people like me who didn't like the new Star Wars mm-hmm. specifically is like, it wasn't made for you. It's always been for kids. Mm-hmm. And it's always going to be for kids. Uh, the ones you liked were the ones you liked when you were a kid. Yes. Like, that's the point Go of Go back this. and watch the original Star Wars. They're kind of juvenile. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, so wrestling, I feel like, is the same kind of way. Mm-hmm. Like, it's very nostalgic driven because your brain when you were a child kind of goes that way. And that kid is just always going to be there. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. It, it was the brilliance that, and I, uh, if I ever talk about this, the brilliance of WWE post 2008 going to a PG market was specifically financial crisis. People aren't spending money. And I know this from personal experience. And I, and I think Matt, by the only one who's a parent here, are you the only one who's a parent? I am a parent. You, are the, you, I think you, most parents will not buy something for themselves in order to buy something for their child. Mm-hmm. Yes, that is true. Uh, but on, on the flip side, I think part of what part of the PG thing and part of the reason why it sort of worked for WWE was that they knew, OK, we've got an we've got a bunch of fans who grew up with Austin and the Rock and, you know, came of age through that whole thing. Now they're married, hopefully mm-hmm. having kids, yep. maybe. <laughs> um, and they're ready and they want to share like all parents do. They yep. want to share what they love with their kids, whether it's their favorite music or whether it's their favorite video game or whatever it is. So if you're like me and you loved wrestling, but you remember what was happening during the late nineties and you're thinking, I don't know. Now they put that PG stamp on it. Like, you know Mm -hmm. what? It's okay. It's safe. You can put your kid in front of this and it's going to be all right. And it lets you open that door. And then if you're WWE in theory, what that should do, if you have, parents and their children it should double your market unfortunately yeah. that hasn't necessarily happened but but in theory, i think it I, was it i was think a good um, i idea. think them moving to a pg product got them through the financial crisis period i don't because there was not a lot of disposable income out there that people were willing to spend on t-shirts mm-hmm. and and john cena wristbands and things like that 
like unless your kid really wanted it and then you're going to save up and you're going to not have that coffee or you're not going to do that and you're going to buy your kid that stuff. I think it got them through. Well, that I was era. I would imagine that uh, that's why a lot of the independent feds around here are mostly RPG. Yeah. You know, because they, they, yeah. they, you want people to bring their that's, kids. That's a big part of it. Mm-hmm. But, uh, the, and we can get into, I mean, I think Sword wants to go to another segment. Well, speaking of indie wrestling, <laughs> there was a lot of indie wrestling <laughs> indie, this indie weekend. Wrestling. Oh. And you can check out some of that indie wrestling, PG and not PG, whatever your choice may be, if you have kids or not, or you just, you know, let your kids Don't see the world. Watch. Go check it out, IndieWrestling.us, IndieWrestling.network. Literally uploading as I started this show are two great shows. Of course, RWA with March to Victory uh, 2020, which was a fantastic show that we just... I literally finished editing it at 5 o'clock today. <laughs> so, uh, But also, uh, Marcus Mann, as, you were, as we were ta- uh, alluding to, you were also a part of the Rise Wrestling Show uh, that happened in Connellsville. A lot of great stuff happened there. Jim Sterling is a part of that. I'd like to kind of mention that. Uh, talk about Angry that a little Space bit afterwards. Angry Space Potato. Angry Space Potato. Potato. Bradley was there. You can you actually see uh, Bradley having his chair stolen on that show. Uh, so yeah, Marcus, that's, that's what you get as a as a Rise Patreon member, as a <laughs> member of the roster. You paid for that seat. You Will's, paid for that Will, seat. Will, yeah, you, you get priority. Hey, seating. it was used in the match. It but, was um. You, a, a, there's, a, there's mayhem and calamity as uh, Scarlet and, and Honey Badger went at it. Uh, uh, Shirley Doe may have threatened you at ringside. Uh, so I always encourage you to buy a ticket. But of course, if you are not able to get to Connellsville or and want to see what the fuss is about at Rise Wrestling with a Y. You can go check it out at IndieWrestling.us and over 300 hours of professional wrestling and interviews going on there. I just have this pull apart going on right now. It's great. <laughs> so uh, I can see my the sticky that has my name on it on the chair that one of us <laughs> holding. There you go. That's how close to the action people get. Uh, so also fantastic stuff going on there. This is the lead in uh, to the main event. That was Tony Johnson. Feature presentation. Feature presentation. Yeah. Thank we, you. We sorry. try not to get it confused with the main event. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. That's a good thought there. Uh, <laughs> against in a handicap match for the Rise Grand Championship against uh, Privilege. Hashtag Privilege. That uh, truly was a handicap match because all Tony Johnson had to do was only beat David Lawless and uh, DCR. Yes. So that truly was a handicap match. So go check that out. A lot of other great stuff. RWA, uh, Prospect Pro Wrestling uh, just had their uh, uh, latest show up last week. And uh, a lot of great stuff going on there. Uh, the original Re- Wrestle Rex and Lucia Fiestas are on there as well. Uh, our friends at Premier Championship Wrestling, some welterweight wrestling. Uh, so much great classic stuff going on over there. Uh, IndieWrestling.network and IndieWrestling.us. Go check it out. And uh, digital download and the network is five ninety nine. dollars Or check it out with a free seven-day trial. Speaking of which, speaking of... Uh, rise wrestling marcus so so this jim sterling thing yeah i so he's a youtuber we don't yeah. we haven't talked about this yeah on the let's show. talk about jim sterling because this is this has been a fantastic uh, uh, collaboration yeah takeover whatever it's become over there um can, can you for because i had no idea going into this what is jim sterling and what the hell is he doing at rise so uh jim is a uh englishman uh <laughs> He's from he's from England, uh, but then he moved to the U.S. Like uh, I don't know how many years ago he was living in Mississippi. Uh, and, and Jim got very big on um, uh, social media, YouTube, things like that. Making um, video game reviews is really his big thing. Um, so uh, for a very long time, he's been making these kind of. Um, uh, he's kind of in that same vein of like. Um, Yahtzee Croshaw and these kind of like they take video games they kind of break down what's good and what's bad about them in like very interesting and funny ways and a lot of personality personality they're edited in and stuff like that um and and Jim was very very good at this and has made a a really good career out of it Mm -hmm. um and then I don't know when he started getting into wrestling but he just kind of like started goofing around with wrestling uh did some training down in Mississippi where he was living um and then uh if I can I'll be completely honest uh uh, the owner of Rise, Brandon K, uh, is a huge video game fan. Uh, they, they do a great podcast called Culture Pop. Yeah, uh, it talks a lot about a lot of geeky things. So Brandon's things. always playing video games and stuff like that. I, I am too. I'm a big video game guy. I'm just not a big review guy. As we talked a little bit about the wrestling. I kind of just do things on my own. But Brandon was like seeing this stuff from Sterling, and he was like, "This guy's really entertaining." And he saw some like wrestling clips and stuff, and he was like, "Well, that's really funny." 
So literally just shot him an email. Like, hey, we run a wrestling company, uh, blah, 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 blah. And uh, Jim was like, I'd love to come up and do something. And we saw it as an opportunity because uh, when you watch his videos, he's just so charismatic and so interesting and, and, and so funny that we were like, OK, let's let's give him a shot. You know, let's just see what we can do here. So we brought him up to Pittsburgh uh, for a show. Uh, I believe it was like in September ish. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, we gave him a microphone and um, I was like, here's the segment. Here's here's what I think we could do. Uh, he adapted immediately. Uh, great promos. Really fantastic character, and he came to the back, and uh, he goes, I go, wow, it was great, and he goes, I don't think it was very good, and I go, really, and he goes, yeah, I don't think I did a good job, and I go, oh, you fit right into professional wrestling, like, you got it, dude, like, (laughs) that's all of us, Uh, and then we, like, talked, and he had some really good ideas, and we had some really good conversations, and then he recently moved to Philadelphia, um, and has been coming in for us uh, more regularly uh, and he's been one of the most interesting guys. He and I usually take at least like 20 minutes to talk to each other at shows, um, just to get like some interesting ideas and vibes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, he loves, uh, like good long-term, um, little, um, storylines where he loves dropping little hints and ideas and things like that, which I'm very interested in. Well, uh, so we meshed immediately storyline wise. And I think he's, he's pulled off everything with in spades. And, uh, he is, I mean, he's got a really big YouTube following. I think he's uh, almost up to 900,000 YouTube subscribers at this point. Jeez. Uh, and his YouTube following his Twitter following is fantastic. Um, he's pushed our product. He's done really well. Um, and, uh, we really have enjoyed having him just in the locker room in general. Like, everyone talks mm-hmm. about like, He's become one of those dudes in the locker room that like is really quick with a joke and really easy to talk to and just really, really nice to have at all the shows. Um, so I can't I can't say enough nice things. And that's uh, here's the thing is like he is anyone in our locker room. I'm going to say incredibly nice things about because they're in our locker room. And I absolutely I mean, I defend and love our locker room no matter what. Um, but even if he wasn't, even if I just met him on the street, he'd be just everyone who meets him is just like he's a really interesting, fantastic guy. He seems like somebody that almost didn't need all that much training from you guys no i mean he does a little bit with us like i'm sure he does but yeah. like the first first uh promo he did it was oh, like yeah. yeah yeah oh the guy's I, got it space yeah. he's got he's Very got that good. charisma he's got the he's got the personality and charisma but it's kind of translating that to like the probably the timing and the in front of crowd because this is a guy that's popular on youtube yeah in front so, of a camera mm-hmm. and editing so some versus of that, some of that's like he's he's like well i'm not getting a reaction here or there and you're like okay but this is why like if you've done it long enough, you know why the crowd's kind of not saying anything or why they are saying something or things like that. And he's learning that and mm-hmm. he's starting to like, he's starting to pick it up and you're like, okay, you got a knack for this. Like you mm-hmm. really know. Um, he came from the South when he did wrestling. So like crowds are very different in Mississippi than they are in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're much more responsive to everything in Mississippi. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he was like, Oh, like I'd say like one line and the crowd would go like insane. You're like, it's a very just, Southern crowds are more into that type yep, of stuff yep. than, than Pittsburgh. Um, and then when we got like a little bit, like I t- talked to him a little bit, like the history of Pittsburgh wrestling and how the Philadelphia bleed in and the WWF New York bleed in and how that kind of shaped the market. Uh, once he started figuring that out, he's, he's gotten a lot better with like understanding that this line might not get it, but that's okay because this line will. Mm-hmm. Like he's, he's paced himself a lot better and understood it. And it's only, I mean, he's really only been with us for like four shows and mm-hmm. he's just really got an act for it now. If I had to choose anything that was at the first, that I was going to say he could do better and he fixed it very quickly was give the crowd a chance to react. Yeah. 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 Give us a chance. Give me a chance to start a chance or, but, but to his, his to going. his credit, I think he had mic problems. The very oh, first yeah, yeah. promo he, he did. did, like the mm. mic cut out, and he just yeah. kind of went go, kept going with it. So I mean, there was a little bit of hurdle yeah. along with that. Yeah. So no, I mean that's I mean that's always like the tech. I've been in shows where the the mic is gone, and you've had to like go, all right, man, like yes, uh, yes, I hope you can hear me. Mm. Uh, type of inf- type of stuff, or you just kind of wrap up and mm. move. Uh, he's like I said, he's adapted quick as as all hell, and I've I've been impressed with it. He adapted on promos, I think, faster than uh, anyone I've seen, even myself, when I was like that, like young or like in front of crowds, like not really doing it as often as as uh, as, as you would think. I mean, he's I don't know how many shows he's done done, like because I, I don't know how many he did mm-hmm. down south. Um, but I think, for, did he pop up at Chikara as well? He or did. Something? He did last Saturday. He popped up at Chikara, did like a meet and greet and some stuff yeah. over there. Yeah. Um, he's been talking to uh, Quack and Bush and stuff about Good. like doing some stuff over there. He absolutely loves uh, Chikara wrestling. Um, 
It was very, very funny because I can't remember what show it was. He was supposed to come in for us um, uh, the next month and the the month before I had um, the Chikara car came in with Mm -hmm. like Still Life and Whisper and all those guys. And he was like, I can't believe I'm not there for that show. Mm -hmm. Like, I love Mm -hmm. these guys. I've been following them. And you're like, really? And he's like, oh, I absolutely love Chikara. Um, so whenever we like had the Chikara car and he was like, that's so awesome that you guys are doing stuff like that. Um, which we love those guys. Like, um, I hang out with, um, I've been hanging out recently because I've been seeing them a lot in Ohio, like Carmel's and Defarge and those guys and mm-hmm. the Chikara group. And they're mm-hmm. just, all those guys are just doing fantastic work out there. Um, so getting to see him do some stuff with the Chikara was pretty cool as well. Awesome. Yeah. So you had a, a pretty interesting post today about Pittsburgh wrestling. That you were getting oh. some response from, so I w- I wanted to kind of. Did you get some good stuff out of no, that? No, no, I just don't want to talk about you it. You just want. <laughs> okay. No, I'm kidding. No, no, not that. No, 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 not that post. Not oh. that post. Oh, okay. The other post. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Uh, no, I don't. I didn't. I didn't check my status in a while because I've been in the chat room. Uh, I have to leave the chat room. I think. Um. I think momentarily you can throw that in the yeah, corner. Yeah, I mean, like there. So I, I just started like a thing out of like about this idea about Pittsburgh wrestling of like, who is the best Pittsburgh wrestler right now? And that's a, like a, that's such a loaded question because to me it's about like, what do you like? Mm -hmm. Um, so, and it it gave me a nice little blend for certain people because it's like some people who were responding were responding with certain wrestlers. And I can read like a couple, like a good example is like, uh, I seen like, um, like Ron Hunt's name come up a couple times mm-hmm. and like Ron is very entertaining and a very, very good. Uh, I think he's, a, I think he's a fantastic heel. I've not got to watch as much as his baby stay baby, baby face run stuff in RWA, mm-hmm. but he's so charismatic and he's so hungry on, uh, on a promo and he's so very different than like a Lee Moriarty who is charismatic, but not in the same way of like the promo driven or yeah. the, that type yeah. of the storyline driven stuff. But like, so dynamic in the ring. A um, lot of people were saying um, Jack Pollock, obviously, uh, with what he's doing over there at IWC. I think uh, who was it? John Roden's name got thrown in a couple times. Sam Elias, uh, Johnny Patch. That's uh, Sam Adonis. Or, or Sam Adonis, yeah. not Sam Elias. I apologize, Sam. Uh, I'm trying to see who else is in there. And then, like, main event got their name thrown out there a couple times. This tag team. And I, like, I mean, who's going to argue against them as the best tag team in Pittsburgh? Somebody's right got to be saying Lee in there. A lot of Lees. A lot mm. of Lees. I'll give mm. that. I'll give Lee a lot of credit. Bradley. <laughs> Is that your tag name with him? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lee and I have like, so we're talking, Lee and I have a, like an interesting argument all the time, like when we're in the car together, which is, um, I call it the, the Seinfeld Chris Rock argument. So like uh, Seinfeld and Chris Rock have this disagreement about stand up comedy where Chris Rock believes that people come to a, a show to see the performer. Mm-hmm. to see what this person has to say. Seinfeld believes that people are coming for the jokes, mm-hmm. the specific material. So Lee and I kind of always have this kind of disagreement where I'm like, I think people are there to see the character and what the character is going to do. And Lee feels that they're there to see the match and what that person is doing in the match, the moves that he's doing, the, the mm. that. Okay. So like we have okay. this kind of disagreement That's interesting. Um, on it. And I feel like, Lee has started to make that bridge between the two. So, so, that, so that has been really fast. A one to watch. one to that because, yeah. um, again, going through the Rise show, there was, for instance, PB Smooth and mm-hmm. um, Josh, Josh Bishop, Bishop yeah. which was, uh, you know, was reminded like, and Josh Bishop is a guy that I've seen at UXWA and AIW doing main event stuff at, at AIW. Uh, both yeah. of both of them featured, uh, and Derek did a really good job. Derek Direction was on commentary, of course he uh, was, <laughs> of course he was, and 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 really kind of bridging that what's going on with AIW. Both yeah. these guys are going to be on Tampa WrestleMania weekend doing yeah. things that pretty big um and and them at rise that crowd doesn't know that no and and you know me as a fan i can come to rise to see that match because i want to see those guys sure. but i really want to see that in the aiw environment sure right yeah so like so, yeah so there's there's those two guys in the odeon Mm-hmm. is a different vibe than them than in, in a stronghold, stronghold. What you but get, then what... again a matt connard versus tony johnson is is going to be different in the stronghold than at black diamond wrestling exactly and that's and that's the thing about it is like so pb and josh was like okay how do we get something different on the show mm-hmm. and they i don't think they, they'd never worked a singles match together really i don't think they had well, yeah, yeah they're both tag guys up yeah there. yeah so um they'd never worked a singles match i and to my belief and i was like man it's two big guys mm-hmm. it's a hoss match we don't have any 
we don't have that on the card and like PB needs something coming off of last time we saw him was in January. Mm-hmm. So like, I think it'd be a good match for him. And we had Josh in with Wes as a tag and man, he is so good. Uh, Josh Bishop is going to be one of those guys in two years that just you're seeing on TV. Like he's got something. Um, Derek said, had a, had a good line in that. And, uh, and I, I apologize for keeping you from here in the commentary, Marcus, uh, being here tonight, I but, uh, <laughs> want to watch my show. <laughs> Uh, but he said a line of like, these are two guys you're going to see in a arena or stadium in the next few years. Oh yeah. PBs. Uh, I've been saying that for a while. Mm -hmm. Uh, just his athleticism, his speed, his size. He's ridiculous. He's very, very great. Josh has got this charisma and Mm -hmm. like intensity about him that I absolutely love. So that's like, those are the types of matches that I think like if you see it on paper, uh, it's one of those things where you're like, well, I don't know where else I'm going to see it. So I'll see it here, which is like the goal of it. Let's get people in the door. But I think once you see that match, you like, and, and looking back, man, PB did some stuff that I've never seen PB do, do before in that match. When they got, when they were, um, you know, doing the typical Haas, like mm-hmm. shoulder block, nobody moves. And then he says, we need more room. Yeah. And they started at the back of the ring and met in the front <laughs> twice. Yeah. I was like, oh, like I've never seen that before. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah. They're yeah. very, very uh, smart guys. Josh, uh, who's, not long in this business. I mean, he's very, very young Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you see his maturity and his ability. Um, and that's like, I've been trying to do that more. Um, I, I have, I haven't done a list yet. Um, but the amount of people on our roster who are regular to semi-regular, they're going to be wrestling in Tampa, uh, coming up here Mm -hmm. is long. Mm -hmm. It's very, very long right now. Uh, and that goes all the way from like the AAW crew with like PB and Derek and Dan and stuff to MV Young, Calvin and Tyler, Calvin, on... Tyler, Ziggy. I know Sean Phoenix is going to be down there. Um, MV Young's running his own show. David Lawless is going to be down there. So like, it, it, it's not just like those types of guys. It's it's the competitors that you see like month and month out. Lee Moriarty is going to be down there doing stuff. Uh, Trey yeah, Lamar, yeah. like there's so many guys that uh, and, yeah, and girls that we brought in that are going to be like, down there doing stuff, and it just got like to a point where like, like, man, there's a really good group of talent mm-hmm. uh, oh, well, from yeah. this tri-state area okay. that isn't just making the tri-state area waves anymore. They're getting mania bookings. They're getting bookings in Indiana. They're getting bookings in New York and all mm-hmm. that type of stuff. It's mm-hmm. been fantastic. Hey, it's it's it, there, there's been you know between the rises the IWs the training. I mean there's there's several very good uh, the training trainers schools in this mm-hmm. area that have been just turning out stuff for the last five years. It's yeah. been insane. Yeah. Uh, what Cleveland's been doing. I mean, we see Cleveland all over WWE. We see Pittsburgh all over WWE. This has been happening for a while. And it's, I, I feel like it's kind of become this big bubble, this big talent bubble. That's, it, that's really kind of reaching this, this crescendo right now. Yeah. I've been really fascinated to watch. Um, uh, I had a really good, uh, conversation with, um, Wadsworth, not Farnsworth, but Wadsworth, uh, who does the commentary over at AIW. And he was just talking about like, um, the school and how like they've gotten onto this really, really good track of once you get like one or two like great classes that are going out and getting other bookings mm-hmm. and they they get out there and then the next class comes in and wants to be that class and then it just starts rolling. It pushes and rolling everybody and yeah. rolling. Yeah. And so like AAW has been one of those places that's just put out consistently good workers at their training school. Mm-hmm. And that has a lot to do with uh Dominic Greeny and uh Josh Prohibition, but also guys like Dr. Dan and Derek and those guys that are like down there with them every single week, working mm-hmm. with them as well and learning their, the ins and outs. And so like, you know, Dom, the, the trainers are there to do the stuff, but they have a lot of mentors and people as well that are, uh, you know, Wes Barkley is one of those guys who's been around training now a lot. And Josh Bishop like gets in there when they can. And, mm-hmm. and you know, Zach Thomas and those types of guys that are there to like be mentors to the new kids and teach them how to do things the right way. And they have a really good track record of doing it. Um, where Pittsburgh as well. I mean, you look at some of the people that just keep churning out of Pittsburgh right now. Mm-hmm. It's been fantastic. And I'll give, I give, you know, IWC school a lot of credit with that. You see, like you watch 2PW, you watch those types of shows. Those they're churning out a lot of great talent and they're churning out a lot of people that really want to um, do it. And so like, if I can give anything out like to people out there that are maybe watching this and interested in training is there are a lot of good training schools out there right now. Um, specifically, um, you know, obviously I'm going to push my school and Brandon K 
uh, and what Brandon has done over the years and who he is and who, what he can do. If that school isn't close enough for you, there's other places to go. Um, pick a trainer that you want to be trained by. I think that's, I tell people all the time, if you see a trainer and you want to, and you think they're going to be good for you, watch their matches, mm -hmm. see how good they are. Mm -hmm. Make the determination for yourself because I think the good trainers stand on their own two feet. Guys like, like I said, Brandon Kay, Chris LaRusso. I know uh, Quinn Magnus has been helping out a little bit at IWC with some training stuff, which is good. Go to AIW. Josh Prohibition and Dominic Carini are phenomenal trainers. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if if you watch and you go like, that's the guy I want to be trained by, I think you should go for it, you know? Awesome. So a lot of great stuff going on. Again, check out Rise Wrestling. With a, Please. Y. With, Please. A y. with a Y. With a Y. Go check it out. Check there's, it a lot of, there's, there's a lot on YouTube. Okay, okay, I will. Oh, good. Oh, good. And please contribute to the Patreon for them as well if you like what's going on. Uh, help support independent wrestling always. I'll do that too. Hey, so <laughs> also, please go support uh, our friends of the show. Maybe you're not in the area, but if you are, please go check out our friends at SliceOnBroadway.com, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Four locations here in town. But of course, if you're you're not here, please tweet them, PGH underscore Slice. Let them know you want to slice on your Broadway, wherever you may be. And you never know. Maybe we can help them expand a little bit as well. Thanks to our friend Slice on Broadway. Uh, hey, guys, we're going to roll right into a quick ad. We're going to hear from somebody uh, real quick and be right back with Mayhem Mania because we've had a long front loaded show and Matt has been mainstream Matt has been chomping at the bit over here to clean up this damn mess. <laughs> we'll be right Let's back in a work. second. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Ladies and gentlemen, this is M Dog Twenty, Matt Cross, International Superstar, you name it. You are checking out the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thanks. <laughs> was only for Except Facebook. We don't have to go next that week. was only for we Facebook. Have to come back yeah, I could, I could just like pull that off of Facebook and just is this post that. is this talking mayhem? Uh, no, mayhem? no, no, that's later. That's oh, later. Okay. <laughs> we gotta have the mayhem mania. Then we'll talk <laughs> mayhem mania. Okay. There's, no there's a process, there's no Marcus. Is this there's the no mayhem way. mania pre-show? Oh, we no don't way. tell you how to run your show. There's All no right. way. That's it. Good night, everybody. There's no way Missy's letting us do a talking mayhem mania. Is she still here? Telling you right now, it's not happening. All right. Everybody else left. You had like a whole crowd. Maybe we'll do you. tomorrow morning. She had her own Mayhem show staff back there. Where'd they all go? Yeah, where'd they go? They're all kidnapped. Were they mad because they weren't the number one wrestler? <laughs> he walked out in a huff. That's right. <laughs> Anyways. She, she, um, was, she was surrounded by gingers, basically, yes. wasn't she? <laughs> Missy, Missy, did you catch the gingivitis? She does not have that. <laughs> All right, how's the, how's this game work? All right, hold on a second. We got we got to introduce it first. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. There we go. Hold on. Aren't you hold caught on. up on the lore? Hold on. We we, we got to get no. into the show with some mayhem mania. Marcus Mann is here, and he has no idea what the rules are, despite having been here. I think most of the years, uh, but we'll get past no. that. This is like You've my been... second year. Second year? Tops. No. Tops. Really? No, maybe third. I'm they... not familiar with the lore. <laughs> We'll search that later. But uh, here to step us through the whole thing. Why is that up front? They don't, they're not sponsoring us. What, what, what's happening here? Get that out of the front. They, we're, Corona's not sponsoring us. There you go. There you go. This is not sponsor of Mayhem Mania. It's the taste of a new generation. No, no, oh, no. Sorry. Okay, sorry. No. Sorry. No. That's the like taste is infectious. That's right. Damn it. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Mainstream Matt, what's happening? Hey! Mayhem Mania is uh, its kind of a competitive thought experiment. Uh, the goal is to create the best WrestleMania card possible within the boundaries of the current reality in which we all live. That means everyone we're using comes in their current physical, emotional, contractual, pharmacological, etc. state. Um, Vince McMahon can do it. You can do it. Sorry, pharmacological made me like think welcome. of like six people. <laughs> <laughs> Three God. of them were New Jack. <laughs> uh, New Jack, Dylon, <clears throat> Dylon. No, God. <laughs> so, so what we have is uh, what we what we will have. You'll you may notice there are seven matches right now on this here marker board. There will be eight eventually, and your job will be to make one change to the card okay. to improve it. To okay. make it better, because we're showing Vince the untapped potential of okay. the greatest assemblage of 
wrestling talent in the history of mankind, gotcha. which is what WWE has right now, but they can't seem to get it all put into place. Um, so anyway, so you can either like, you know, get rid of a match entirely, bring in an entirely new match with entirely new people. You can swap mm-hmm. one person out for another person or mm-hmm. swap a tag team out for another person. You can get really cute. I think one of the Haasman did this one time, Sorg. Yeah. But you can like swap one for one inside the yeah, card. Yeah, they used to happen all it's the time. Funny, yeah. And um, so, so, so let your imagination run wild, but gotcha. not too wild, because there are rules. Um, anyway, uh, the point is that the reason there are seven matches on this card and not eight is that because if a match survives three straight weeks without being altered in any way, it graduates to like a super card. We lock it in and we just move it off to the side so that we can open up another slot so we can have some more fun. So, so far, we have graduated three whole matches. Okay, question. Go ahead. Okay. So, there's only this is only 3 weeks left, correct? Yeah. Okay, so what happens if at the end those matches that does just the card become the card? Oh, well, just just, you know, to, yeah, just yeah. enjoy the current week's programming. Oh, sorry. That's what we've been told, right? <laughs> uh, Stop you, you know, um, Are you entertained? <laughs> I'm trying to judge my odds about how I get my my match in there. Look, listen, listen, Marcus. Oh, it's true, Marcus. We are going down the home stretch. Yeah. Um, we're coming down and we're going to have a, a couple more rounds. This round, another round, and then we're going to have Patreon in the bank. Sorg. Oh, I'm unaware. What is this? Um, that is when we invite only the Patreon supporters of the Wrestling Mayhem show mm-hmm. to come and they get like super duper powers and that's when like the shit really hits the fan because like that's when we bring in like stipulations and like you know, feelings, special yeah. referees that's when friendships get broken um mm-hmm. and sometimes if you know they you know give us enough money we give them the power <laughs> to like auto graduate fast track matches straight to the supercard so you know sorg it all kinds of it all ends up working out in the end every year, doesn't it? We've More had, or less. We've done this five straight years, and, they, and we always end up with. And then, and then you have to recover for three months uh, psychologically. Yeah. Question: Yeah, uh, do you guys at the end? Because I've never graduated all the way to the end. Obviously, I, I drink a lot. Um, do you put a? Do you do a card order of like what's going to be your kickoff match versus what's your main event? Um, you know, sometimes we put matches on the pre-show. <laughs> Okay. Uh, we, we have a very special match that we have on the pre-show. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> I think you're going to like this one. You're not allowed to steal this idea, by no, the no, way. I'm not going to lie. But here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. That might be an interesting uh, Patreon gift is, is, is to put the card in order of what's the main event. Uh, and what's what? You I don't know. We have so show. many more uh, higher level Patreons. Not so flexible yeah. and easily influenced, Marcus. So that sounds like a great idea. Yeah. I got to be honest with you. Um, anyway, um, I'm familiar with the lore. I get it. <laughs> the lore. Um, anyway, Sorg, Sorg, we've graduated three matches so mm-hmm. far. Oh. Don't you think we should tell Marcus what the three matches that have graduated yes. to our supercard are yes. so far? Yeah, because yes. I want to know who I can't use. Yeah, exactly. Well, then that doesn't end there either. Oh, we've got oh. a lot of explaining to do here. These <laughs> rules are very simple. Very simple. It seems like it. Yeah, it seems like you know anybody can <laughs> it's do It's definitely this. not convoluted at all. That, it's not convoluted at all. Here are the matches that all have graduated right. so far. Marcus, you're going to... All right, one do I second. get a slideshow? Yeah, yes, you do. Here you go. go. First off, the match that graduated, we have mm. first... Uh, yes, that's right. Sky Pirates, Asuka... Io Shirai and Kairi Sane versus Mia Yim, Tegan Knox, and Kaylee Ray. Question: Is that a real tag team, or did you guys make that up? We made that. We made it up. Yeah, oh, good for Tina you. Keys made Tina it up. Tina Keys made it up. Mm. Good for you guys. I, I think I think the Mia Yim, Kaylee Ray, Tegan Knox is based in yeah. some vague. Sort they're of they're like sure. the shiniest wizards or something like yeah, that. So yeah, some of these stuff. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. Know. Like shiny, smashy, something like something. that. Well, yeah. Tina's exactly. here. She can explain it if she likes. Nah, we don't need. Oh, okay. They're moving on. Sorry, Tina. Just assume it's an awesome tag team. Um, Edge versus Matt Riddle, Ooh. created by Chad the Shed, and then Sorg. I'm really jacking away this. Oh, right. Go oh. all the way down to the bottom. Wait, where is it? All the all way at the bottom. Down oh, down no, 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 no. The latest graduated match oh, this is one? Jazz no. versus Bianca Belair. Tina got I two of them. That. All right, so Tina Keys um, has created two matches that have graduated so far. She gotcha. is running this whole show basically. Perfect. So any, anytime, MVPs. So anytime you um you graduate a match, you get like a series of rewards. So um it, it's um you know kind of like a little incentive uh for everyone to you know try their best. Uh so Tina, um Tina, how are you? I'm doing good. Congratulations. Hello. You are um you're dominating Mayhem Mania in a way that uh, I can't 
fight that I recall ever happening before. So great job would, so I far. I wouldn't say dominating. I I just studied a lot on the lore like you're supposed to. Yeah, you're supposed to do your homework. <laughs> it's, it's the lore. If you would do the lore, then you're you supposed to be... FedEx me the giant tome. I Oh, you know what? I sent the link to other people. I didn't send you the link to the matches. Uh, you know what? I, I need a tome. Anyway. <laughs> I can't do this in front of them. All right. Now, in addition to the okay. people that you just saw on the card that you okay. can't use because they're already used, Got it. there are also some other people that you are not allowed to use because they are locked in a thing that we lovingly refer to as space jail. Okay. Okay. So um, through various points during the uh, process here of Mayhem Mania, uh, people end up getting locked away. And if they're on this wheel, you cannot use them. Okay. okay. Uh, and those people include, um, well, I mean, this is a little complicated because uh, Mad Mike put WLC into what? space. That's, not a, that's he, not a person. It's a stipulation okay. that could come up. So later. concepts can stay in here. Concepts it, it, could be put into it's, space. It's because jail. of a personal grudge. It's because, because of a personal of a grudge and because. There's a long story history the, in the lore. Yeah. The yeah. He, he, he has to say the lore. Yeah. He has to say the lore. Okay. I'm nothing if not flexible. See? Um, all right. So here are some actual human beings. Uh, Randy Orton, Goldberg. Can you, uh, I don't want to take up all night, but can you explain how each and every person got in? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, you got go, go, go. Watch some they past episodes. Rewarded, rewarded with their go, choice just, of just, sending somebody. Just go, just to go space catch the first there. episode of yeah. uh, Talking Me. Mad Mike hates me. That's why we all see is in there. Right. Yes. <laughs> Randy Orton, Goldberg, Ronda Rousey, Triple H. And Bailey. Now, as part of her reward for graduating a match, Tina gets to put one more person into space jail go. right now. So, Tina, uh, would you like to uh, put someone to space jail for us, please? Um, yeah, just because, I, at least in my way of thinking, I don't know where I could place her in this current roster of what's going on. Her. The legit boss, Sasha Banks. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh, Why Tina. would you do that? She, yeah, I, I get her point. She did just thank Vince for not booking her on WrestleMania so she can wow. just hang out and collect a paycheck. Uh, wow, I would the boss him. and hug connection huh? are I would thank him for that too. Man. Yeah, yeah. You mean they get to hang out and just get coronavirus? <laughs> 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 All right, so here's another fun oh, part about boy. Space Jail. It's a giant prize wheel. So uh, I usually... don't, don't give it away. <laughs> 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 give away the secret. We spin the wheel once every week to see if someone it's can escape also a visual space medium. jail. You may think, what are the odds that's yeah. going to happen? It keeps freaking happening, I, all right? I love Mar People Marcus. Marcus is out of space jail. Marcus is worried about Mayhem Kayfabe, or as we like to call it, Mayfabe. <laughs> <laughs> if you were caught up on yeah. the lore, you'd know this. Hashtag, space jail is the lore. a minimum security facility. Okay. Um, so let's spin the wheel and see if anyone escapes space jail tonight. I bet Sasha gets right out. That's just my luck, right? Oh. Are you kidding? Me? Oh. 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 It's Alex. free. I'm behind it. I free. didn't see. Wait, oh. Alex. Was it? Alex, oh, no. your oh, reaction. No. I'm here. Give me the good news. We LC is out of space jail. Yes. Mike and Mad Mike, I warned you this could happen. I know. I know. What is but you know what? By the, the way. This. By the way, now that that's out, I, Marcus, I need to talk to you later about an idea involving the main event and tiny ladders. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. All right. Perfect. I've already, I've already had a partial Henry's conversation about this perfect. with somebody. We'll uh, talk about it later. Yes. Uh, yes. On talking, talking. On talking, talking, mayhem mania. Yes. <laughs> Not in close. Not in close. It lasted a good long time. It did. It had a good run. It did. It did have a good All run. Right. Now it's free. All right. Second reward for Tina. Mm -hmm. um, okay, this is where I could. You can't take this idea. <laughs> we decided to put it on the. I love you're worried about. <laughs> Don't steal my idea. We have a little thing we call it the um for the pre-show. It's called the Mayhem Cluster Battle Rumble. Okay, Battle Royal. All right, we invite people to name entrance. When we get to Patreon in the bank, everyone's going to get the name one. But Tina, you get to um jump the gun here. So far, Shawn Michaels and Riddick Moss are in the uh, Mayhem Cluster. How many Rumble. people were in the last year's one? Uh, 15 or 20, something like okay. that. Okay, all right. So, and did like, they win a big trophy? Like, like a, like yeah, a, they get the like uh, aggro crag. Like okay, okay. yeah. <laughs> um, it looks like a female reproductive organ. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Tina, I will remind you, if they are in the Mayhem Cluster Battle Rumble, they can be double booked. They can, they can do another match to us. Matt, uh, this is a question I had last week. 
If they are in space jail, can they be booked in the Cluster oh, Battle Royale? No. 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 Read no. the lore. Read the just, lore. No. Learn the lore. <laughs> God. I see that. I was asking for clarification. I wrote the fucking lore. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get my tome. This is strange because I could have sworn I was the one writing the lore every week on the website. But anyway. Uh, Tina? Yes? Uh, you want to help me out here? Marcus is busting my chops. I, I don't know the lore. Um, let's go ahead and add a new toy to the mix. Why not? <laughs> why not add a recently signed Killer Cross? There we go. Ooh. That's better. TikTok. Okay. Now, Tina. Now, something else very exciting is um, you get to hand out a little bit of dose of punishment. So we've got our players this week. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We're bringing in, um, well, we're actually letting Billy play this week. And, uh, oh. Billy uh, sent his in remotely to me earlier. So you're not going to be able to punish Billy, but you can punish uh, Farnsworth or Bradley. No. Or Alex or Marcus. Um, well, we, so we, we would you like to tell battle. people what the, what the punishment is first, or should we punish them first and then reveal what the punishment's going to be? I think we should let them know who's going to be punished mm-hmm. and then when it's their turn let them know what the punishment is okay great what? well i think we'll reveal hey. the punishment after you choose who's going to get it so who do you think should get the punishment this week well, well for somebody who talks a lot of stuff for not knowing the lore <laughs> i want you to think on your feet Marcus, man, you're getting punished tonight. Oh, all right, man. all right, wow. Marcus. Man. Well, the good news is that you're going last, so you got lots of time. To Fantastic, think about it. Marcus. Um, <laughs> the punishment for you this week, uh, in honor of that fine documentary that came out on the WWE Network, you must use an FCW alum oh, uh, okay. to create your match. So, oh, okay, well, FCW like alum. Should... Okay, I have a list if you uh, need help. I may I... need because I'm getting I'm going to get Steve. FCW and OVW confused. Mm. So we're going to see. There's a lot of crossover. Yeah, yeah. there's, yeah, there's a lot of crossover there. Yeah, yeah. All and right. uh, Dave Podner says uh, there's a lot of lore shaming going on. Yeah, don't, don't shame the lore. <laughs> all, right, um, all right, Tina. Finally, um, we got to create a new match to fill this hole in our eighth spot on the card. So would you do us a favor with that, and then we will get down to the business of uh, making some. Changes. Okay. Um, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I have three matches in mind. Um, I just want to know from you guys what's missing. Mm-hmm. Is it something, a brawling style, technical style, or cruiserweight? You're definitely not missing cruiserweight. Yeah. It's missing okay. a WLC match. Oh, you know what? You know, um, should I recap the match? Or yeah, the so match you should probably do that. Oh, wait, I got vid- Hold on. We'll get the rest of the slideshow. Okay, let's get the rest of the slideshow. I will run through the rest of the matches now here. Hold on. Okay. We got so much going on. This Sometimes is a reminder. There you go. Confused. All right, here we go. First of all, we got um, Legero versus Isaiah Swerve Scott versus Jordan Devlin versus John Morrison <laughs> versus Ricochet. Huh? Yeah. Right. Created by Alex Cars. Created by Alex Cars. Next up, we have the Iconics versus Tony Storm and Killer Kelly. Yes, I got that right. Okay. Yes. Who made that one? Tana yes. Keys. Next up, we have Finn Balor versus Alistair Black, created by Brandon from KC. We've got Becky Lynch versus Shayna Baszler. Uh, we booked ours first, folks. Uh, pre- <laughs> created by producer Missy. Uh, CM Punk versus Angel Garza, created by Chad the Shad. Jeez. Reverend Devon and Deacon Batista versus Paul London and the Brian Kendrick. Oh, boy. Uh, who created that? Oh, that was that was uh, Jamie oh, Jameson. The country Hammer. Jamie Jameson <laughs> created that one. I, I love how we have both WWE superstars with the surname Killer booked. I like it. Mm-hmm. And finally, Elias versus Shinsuke Nakamura, created by the Podfather himself, Sorgatron. All right. Tina. Um, yes. Wait, did you guys decide? What do you want? You want? Tina has asked everyone to chime in here. Let's get a brawl. Yeah. A brawl? I'm feeling a brawl. a brawl. All right. Okay, this is a pretty decent brawl, so we'll see. How about Walter? All caps. Versus Drew McIntyre. Oh, mm, that's a Euro brawling right there. Okay. Survivor yeah. Series. I like it. Okay. Right. I mean, it's no Walter versus Keith Lee, but. It's a sore <laughs> subject. I, I, I'm aware. 
perhaps you've heard that there have been known to be some hurt feelings in this. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. No, our, our friend Billy Johnson uh, couldn't join us in person, but I wanted to give him an opportunity to play because uh, he's a good friend of the show and whatnot. And uh, Sorg, I think you'll like this one. Let me make sure I've got his move correct. Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, so Billy Johnson's move and Farnsworth, you are on deck. Um, and uh, Billy Johnson's move is he's getting rid of Legero. And he is bringing in uh, a friend to some of us, at least, uh, Joaquin Wild. Um, perhaps you've heard of him. Bah, 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 bah. Reminds me of somebody. Okay. Farnsworth? Well, that's somewhat problematic, being that my match was going to be we're getting rid of the Oconics versus Tony and Killer. Okay. And we're going to have Joaquin Wild versus Jordan Devlin. In a WLC match. I can't let you do that. Why can't you? Let you <laughs> well, for one thing, we can't do stipulations yet. For another thing, Jordan Devlin's already in a match. And for a third That's thing, Mel Joaquin one. Wild is in a match. Where's Oh, well then, we're getting rid of the... Well then, let's just get rid of Swerve and Morrison and Ricochet to make it a Joaquin Wild versus I can't let Devlin you do that. Match. What the hell am I allowed to do then? <laughs> Jesus Christ! You're trying I to spend move. all of this move. money <laughs> <laughs> to, to be told no all this time. I mean, Take your ten back. Money at the podcast Take your ten back. Well, that's, that's, that's for tenor. later. That's for tenor. later. Tenor. 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 You'll get it okay later. After Soiled me. by this. Patreon <laughs> in the bank is on March twenty fourth. Right? Is that when? It I is? think that's right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I will be long dead from the coronavirus by then. <laughs> Dibs on his move. Now come on, Farnsworth. I know you've got a one B. Come on, help I'm, me out. I'm just I'm just happy to hear WLC already being in the conversation. Alex, <laughs> Alex, Alex, I'm going to make you wish I you don't were understand. Dead. Also, how if it's out of space jail, how's it not usable? Why was it in space jail? <laughs> If it's st- it's free, but it's still unusable, I don't under. It's on I space need- probation. Can someone get me the lore? It's 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 on space. The lore's on the website. WrestlingManShow.com. It's, it's on space house arrest. Okay, we're gonna pull the Il- Ilconics versus Tony and Killer. We're gonna put in. Let's go. S- Let's go Samoa Joe. Okay. Versus. Mm. Uh, wait. I, I'm wait. throwing a swerve and not doing the same match I've done every time I've done this. Uh, You've been here before? I have, and I've always yes. suggested the same match. I want to make sure. Wait, he's I have not to chime in for a second. Why? Samoa, Samoa Joe Joe's is suspension. not cleared. Oh, he's hurt. No, he, he also popped for the wellness policy. Yeah, yeah but he'll be out of that before Mania. He'll be all right. But he's hurt. Is he hurt? He is hurt. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why he was popped. How hurt is he? <laughs> I'm not sure. We'll go with he's not, he's he's not so hurt that he can't wrestle. <laughs> Hold on a second. All right, who's the other half of this match? And maybe that'll help sway me. I was going with uh, I was gonna go with uh, the other half of the Broser weights. Pete Dunn. Pete Dune. No, done. Done? <laughs> okay. That's, that's oh, no, match. it's Dune. Read Joe the versus Dune. You know what, Mark uh, Farnsworth, you're, you're so generous. Um, and you know Farnsworth, what? Farnsworth this, 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 stuff, this stuff cleans itself up. I'm uh, almost okay. as generous wow. as I am humble. Wow. So. wow. I'll so let it slide. Generosity is rewarded, huh, man? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. When's the last time I got a move, man? I'm very generous, too. I keep track of the number of moves, Mike. You're fine. Well, the the st- one story, unreliable story I find, Joe could miss WrestleMania. Could. He could. was injured. It was injured on February 20th on a commercial shoot. For no, his, he'd be fine. His knee. He'd be his fair. Knee. I could miss WrestleMania, too. Last time. <laughs> <laughs> we all could miss WrestleMania. Yeah. They could cancel it. Yes. Oh. 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 They're not canceling it. It's an outdoor oh. arena. They'll be fine. Yes. Can't say for the uh, rest of the indie show, so. so. Uh, okay, Bradley. Me? You're up. Okay. And then, Alex, you're on deck. Um, I want to make a point first. Uh, Swerve has something in common with me with Scarlet. What? At, uh, at some point, both of them, during a match, stole my chair. Okay. Okay. All I right. Wanted, I want to point that out just for a moment. Swerve okay. stole your chair? Uh, vicious Outcast <laughs> Wrestling during his entrance. I was standing up and booing him, and he just took my chair and w- took it into the ring and presented himself. 
<laughs> All right. Um, I'll make it real simple. Uh, we're taking out Elias versus Nakamura. Hey, hey, hey! Oh, I'm sorry, Sorg. The the Podfather is disrespected. <laughs> uh, the match sure I want to get invited back to in the main show again. And the uh, the match I want to replace it with. Just make it simple. AJ Styles versus Adam Cole. All right, all right. Styles. Know, not mad, not mad, not that mad. No, no Sorg, it's okay. Be mad. <laughs> Let the hate Sorg. flow. Come I'm, on, I'm Sorg. at you know Sorg. what? Strike him. Sorg, it's not healthy to bottle that shit up. I'm Trust at it. Just I... Take it out on Alex. Alex? <laughs> no, I'm feeling good. I got the directly mean mug Bobby Fish last week, so <laughs> you heckled him from off camera. I, I did not you. heckle him from off camera. That was somebody else. <laughs> Sorg, did you, you ask him how he got out of space? <laughs> 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 that was it's a valid question. What? <laughs> Did you ask him how he got out of space? Jam? No, I did not ask him. I did not. Ask... <laughs> well, that would have been a fun. Listen, if I if I if that. I yelled, "How did you get out of space jail?" One, it wouldn't have been the weirdest thing that was yelled all night. I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's I am. Florida. That's it unlikely. is Florida. And I mean, and by the way, I apologize. I didn't get to do my NXT MMA last night. MMA. AMA. A- MMA. AMA. A- AMA. AMA. Sorry. Sorry, guys. I Maybe you asleep. can do your AMA on talking. <laughs> Mania. <laughs> Coming up next. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Alex. <laughs> Alex, Hello. it's been Hello. a great night so far for you. OccupyProWrestling.com. Get that t-shirt. What are we going to do now? Okay. Um, Trying to think. Trying to think. I had an idea. And then what? Floated out of my head. Oh, you're supposed to write them down. I, I don't have anything to write. All right, hang on. Okay. Tell Siri to remind you. Good, good God, Alex! Come on. Oh, You've all got, right. He, he's got a green okay, screen I, behind him that could you could put anything behind you. By the way, yeah, we could. Oh, yeah, we could. <laughs> okay, quick question: Someone, if someone has been taken out of a match and you weren't the one to take them out of a the match, can you then put put them into a, a new match? Yeah, if they're not on the card right now, you can use them. All right. Okay, cool. Because there's someone that I really want to see on this card. Let's go. Come on. Don't be All shy. Right. I All guarantee right. Marcus uh, is going to come up with something ten times crazier than what you've got. No, no, my. I think I'm, do it. I'm gonna. I'm going to. <laughs> go ahead, I'm Alex. going to file this under uh, Mason's Revenge. Okay. I'm going to be scrapping CM Punk versus Angel Garza. Oh man. Well, at least we got him on. The there goes Punk. We lost Chicago's vote. <laughs> Here we go. Go ahead. All right, and I'm going to replace him with the, with a dream match of sorts that I started thinking about earlier. And I'm actually kind of glad that he was taken off the match that I originally put him in one earlier. So in its place, we're going to have Legero. All right. God. Damn Legero. Versus <laughs> the current Intercontinental Champion, Sami Zayn. Okay. Okay. I just want to say that I'm very, very I, I gotta tell you right now. Um, there's always like a an NXT UK person who yeah. just kind of like will yeah. not go away. So I'm very, like, very disappointed because I really wanted to take CM Punk off the card. Oh, you wanted to be the one to do that? <laughs> you can just get rid of me. <laughs> Seriously. I'm sorry. I, I couldn't help you out with that. Can All I right. put him in space jail? No, you can't. Can I frame him so that he goes to space jail? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can talk about it. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, I can't that's just my let move. you. I can't let you just do whatever you want, Marcus. We have rules here. Okay. You, uh, Marcus, you, you can tight. you can let Punk know that he's not on this on his wedding day. That's what you can do. I, I, you, know, <laughs> you have no idea how much I wanted to fight CM Punk at that Cubs Pirates wild card game. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus, next? oh, is this me now? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You, you, yes, you're oh, up. Okay, and you must. Use an FCW alum. All right. Um, so here's, my, here's, my, here's, here's, here's question number one. Okay. Uh, if they are uh, in a, if they are signed to another promotion, can I can I steal them? Nope. What if I paid them two dollars and fifty cents more? <laughs> <laughs> Lawyers get involved. It's very messy. We don't want litigation. All right. You won't get cleaned up. Aim a hot dog and a handshake. All right. That's not gonna help. Um. Can I get rid of that giant clusterfuck scramble match that you guys got going on there? 
Which one? The, the five way yeah. weight thing? Yeah. I mean, we've been working on it for a really long time. I thought maybe we could get, <laughs> get rid of all of it. It might work. Um, no, no, of course you can. You can do whatever right you want. The... I trust your judgment, Marcus. It's a wash. You just take your pencil out what and you is, erase it out of what existence. What is going on there? Just a it lot started off as a Lucha Underground showcase. The war okay. is all right. deep. So there's like a couple matches that I think definitely should go. Um, like, so I'm leaning in a couple ways because like that thing's a clusterfuck and that's not going to be good. Uh, I'm also leaning this uh, uh, Becky and uh, Shayna Baszler match because like yeah, a little too close to real life. It's yeah, too close no, to real life. A little uncomfortable. And yeah. then you got Dave Batista, and you're like, Dave, I don't want to see you go out that way. The Triple H match. Oh, I absolutely want to see him go out see this go out way. way. I want this to be. I want to see him go out. So I'm a little on a lot of this. Um, here's the thing: is I don't want to ruin everyone's good time. So I'm going to leave. Someone's good time is getting ruined I'm, right I'm here. Gonna leave, I'm going to leave this cruiserweight showcase for you guys to keep adding guys that can't get booked on the regular show. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone can have a good time. I, if, I could, if I could have one thing hit the lore at the end of the day is I hope this thing gets like 20 people in it by the end. Yeah, I really do. That's going to be awesome. So oh, I'm going to I'm going to eliminate uh, Becky and and Shayna. Okay, just because it, it does feel a little too close to real life. Yeah, I yeah, appreciate, yeah. Close to real life. I appreciate that people were seeing that into the future. Yeah, yeah. I was I was holding on to the hope that Vince would change his mind and yeah. this would be a very novel match. I think I didn't think it was a very going to be a very good match. <laughs> happened before it has um, happened yeah i believe uh charlotte and uh uh ripley was booked the first week by yeah. billy so <laughs> yeah so um i gotta go with an fcw alum which is actually like i looked through the list not that hard they got some good guys yeah um some good underused guys so this is a match that i think uh would be very very interesting and um an interesting mix of uh athleticism speed size comedy and everything uh, I think it hits, it's a five-tool match. Uh, so I would like to use my FCW pick as one uh, Big E Langston. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I would like to put him against Keith Lee. Just straight oh, up. All right. Oh, All right. Oh, I don't oh, think we're going to get some New Day, but oh, that works for me too. Okay. Oh, can we get, I, can, know, that, when, can that be when, a five-count match when we get the stipulations, by the way? <laughs> I, I totally thought you were going to book Layake. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> That's Roman Reigns. Oh, yeah, Layake. Yeah, from FCW, Layake. Yeah. yeah, I was close. Reigns. Uh, my backup was going to be Cesaro if I could, if like if Keith or someone got pulled. Cesaro was going to be my backup in that situation. Antonio Always a good Cesaro. one. B is yeah. your Cesaro. A Antonio Cesaro. Yes, I, I, Antonio says. I thought like actually I thought of a, a Cesaro and Lesnar. I was like, man, that'd be. This guy's I've good. tried to book Cesaro versus Lesnar. I think I saw it once before. Was that already At least on the card? Three times. Um, at least three times. I don't think Lesnar's gotten on here yet. This no, year. but I, I know mm. in the Keith past, Lee has I've been. Tried. We've been working on matches for Keith mm. Lee. Yeah, mm. I know I've seen very, Keith Lee. very determinedly uh, yeah. throughout the uh, process. All right, let's recap the card. Good job, Marcus. I knew you'd. I knew you'd do a great job. Yeah, I just had a feeling you had a talent for this. I can't do this without the damn microphone. Sorg, what the hell is going on? Usually, I can not have this blocked. It's your it's, fault, it's isn't a, it? It's a little oh different God. setup. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, you're there right. you go. Yeah, okay. let your, let your right, Vanna White go. over there do something. No, he's not White Vanna He's far as White. Okay, here we go. <laughs> um, all right. Joaquin Wild versus Isaiah Swerve. Scott versus Jordan Devlin versus John Morrison versus Ricochet. Uh, Samoa Joe, maybe, versus Pete Dunn. Dude. It'll work out. Don't worry. Uh, Finn Balor versus Aleister Black. Big E versus Keith Lee. Oh. Oh, Big E Langston. That rhymes. I'm sorry, Big E Langston. Yeah, e Big E Langston. You're always good with intricacies. Those Langston. two names rhyme. You're always good with those things. But I this need FCW. five. FCW. Okay. <laughs> okay, there you go. All right. Uh, Legero versus Sami Zayn. Reverend Devon versus... <laughs> let, me, let me start out. Let me, let me restate. <laughs> Just like Reverend <laughs> Devon and Deacon Batista versus Paul London and the oh, Brian Kendrick. Matt, AJ, Matt. AJ Styles versus Adam Cole. And finally, Walter, all caps, versus Drew McIntyre. Matt, can I please get moved next week? I have something I've, I've been wanting to do with Deacon Batista and Reverend Devon. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have the best idea. <laughs> I got a good feeling for next week, Mike. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks for playing. Thanks. All right. On that note, guys, what did you learn? And girl, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Who wants to go first? 
I learned that everybody's got a price for the ten dollar man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bradley. Um, you know, last time I was here, it was sentimental, and I guess this time it's going to be a little sentimental because mm-hmm. uh, I had a rough four weeks. That rice show I was at, I hadn't been to a show since the rice show before that. Uh, my grandmother passed away. We went to her funeral, driving from Wheeling to Charleston and back the same day. Uh, um, one one weekend, my back went out. The other weekend, I had a stomach virus and lost like five pounds in one night. And what I, what I learned and what I learned over and over is wrestling always makes everything better. And it's great to... I'm, I, I, when I, I was glad that my event coming back was Rise. And everyone there specifically, I mean, there are a couple of places I always get this, but Rise specifically, everyone there was just so friendly and so, so nice to be there. So that's what I've, I relearned, let's say, that um, whatever problems I have, wrestling makes everything better. Awesome. Marcus? Oh, I got to follow that. Yeah, you got to follow that up. <laughs> Try going with a butt joke. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, Come on, Mr. Writer. So I, I talked about this, uh, and I'll, I'll play off Bradley's a little bit. Um, uh, I, I, I made a, a Facebook post like a, a, last week or something like that about uh, wrestling being the uh, perfect in-moment entertainment. Um, and it reminds me every time do I go to a show or I hang out at a show um, or anything like that, that um, when you watch a wrestling match, uh, you're watching two people do something that has never been done before. It'll never be done again. And in that moment, it is a perfect piece of art that disappears uh, into the ether. Um, and there's nothing like seeing it live. Um, I, I, I said this before, like, I got to see Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 25 live. Uh, I was in the crowd. And I have never watched that match back on tape. Because it was perfect in the moment, and mm-hmm. it will always be perfect in my brain, and I don't ever need to see it again. Um, and wrestling, when it's at its best, can give you that feeling. And the fact that uh, I can help get that feeling out to people is incredibly rewarding. Um, and we've seen the hard work in this area pay off, where it's starting to really come around, and everyone I think is starting to fire on all cylinders and do that mm-hmm. across the board. Mm-hmm. Excellent, Matt Carlin's. I gotta follow that. <laughs> <laughs> Try going with a butt joke. <laughs> Can you lend me one? <laughs> so I, I learned that Mayhem Mania only goes moderately better whenever I'm actually here. Oh, and good. When I'm not. Oh, good. There's more lore, lore standards. A lot of lore. Make a tome. There you go. We'll make like the WWE Just rule book where you're like drawing all of it and crossing things out, and there's commentary I by it, Mad I Mike. I need it calligraphied in a giant tome <laughs> that we can f- open it up and f- and and make it work. An, an illuminated manuscript. There you go. Will you accept an Excel spreadsheet? <laughs> Close enough. <All> right. <laughs> That's illuminated. Tina, what'd you learn? Um, I just learned like how I guess speaking to how you guys were talking about different wrestling in the area how it can just transcend from one end of the country to the other um like for example sean phoenix came out here and then actually if memory serves me correctly one of our um pacific northwest talents actually also wrestled for rice this past weekend I think, yeah, right? yeah alan jepson just came in from uh originally from vancouver but made his was making his living now in seattle yes yeah. correct yes nice. i thought that oh no i thought ahead. that was cool I thought that was cool that you that um you Midwest um East Coast Midwest guys get to see some of the talent that's out here in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, and we absolutely would love to get Alan back. He was a fantastic guy. And of course you booked the baseball guy. <laughs> of course you <laughs> who I often see with an Expos hat on. Yeah. I went I went Timberwolves this time, so yeah, I'm going yeah. NBA. Yeah. Uh no, uh, Alan was really, really great. He's friends with Sean. Um Sean uh, was like, I need a rebound match and I need I know a guy. Would you be interested in bringing him in? I said, send me some stuff. And he was fantastic. Great in the locker room. Great to be around. Um, we don't get to see a lot of Pacific Northwest wrestling. Even like I go into like, I have uh, IW.TV right now. And there's not even a lot coming through from Seattle in that area. Um, so it's good um, to see it. 
So to kind of catch you up on that, Defy has their own network on um, Defy on Demand. Okay. Um, three, two, one battle is one of the prominent um, promotions that Alan wrestles for. That's usually on Twitch. So those, and then um, without a cause up in Everett, that's north of Seattle. They're the only promotion that's on IWTV. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I would. IWTV has been a, a godsend for that, like. Hey, would you, would you like, I've never heard of this guy. And it's like, well, I can, what can I find real quick? Yeah, like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. what can I find real quick? Um, but I, it's, it's really crazy at, at how much uh, indie wrestling spreads so fast. Yes. It's crazy that guys are like flying all over like the country. Like a coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Can you not speak oh, about the coronavirus? I'm so sorry. We do I'm anything? so sorry. By the way, we, we, we didn't ban handshakes for the night, but we encouraged people not to handshake for the night. And we had a whole, like, please wash your hands memo and stuff like yeah, that. It was yeah. pretty. Yeah. So the event that I worked in Florida this we're weekend, trying. there's a bunch of college kids. It's like, yeah, yeah. Wash your hands, kids. It's trying. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Alex, what'd you learn? I learned that Sami Zayn is a man of his word. And in the process is apparently taking Paul Heyman's gimmick of giving spoilers on the show. Yeah. There you because go. He did promise. He did that he would win the Intercontinental Championship at Elimination. Chamber. Well, that's not covered on Friday night, so I think he's clear, right? So, all right. What about you, Mike? <laughs> I learned that we might be getting a Riot Squad Triple Threat match at WrestleMania, and I'm all for that. Nice, nice. <laughs> oh, I learned that. Uh, I learned a couple things from my trip to Florida. First of all, that the extreme midget wrestling uh, troupe apparently is e- is everywhere I am, and I still I still don't think I've seen this one in particular um, because they were in Orlando again, and I know they were in Bakersfield when I was in California, and just like yeah, I'm still not gonna, and then then they're in town when I'm I'm busy. So, um, and I also learned. Um, People in Orlando in line for NXT are not excited about going to WrestleMania. <laughs> there was a fellow from uh, K5, the uh, uh, EC3's like online show that he's doing, mm-hmm. and there was I don't know if you've seen the um, uh, it was like Mer- uh, well, it was like Miracle City May- May- Mania or something like that. I saw a flyer going on around on uh, on uh, Facebook today, and I recognized it from this guy was handing out. He's like, hey, anybody going to Mania weekend? And everybody's like, no. No, we're going to ten dollar wrestling that's on USA Network. Oh, so, um, and also, I'm not even trying. I, 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 so legitimately, I'm like, oh, I'm going to wear my good guy shirt to this. Maybe somebody will ask about it or something. Maybe I'll get in a shot or something. And I, I, I was sat there in the middle. It was they take you in and they're like packing you in so it looks good on TV, right? And like you're the you're the first like so many in. I was like so far online. I'm like, oh, I'll never get anything. And that's just where we ended up. <laughs> and then yeah. from Mike, like, it sounded like I was in like every shot. Sorg, you were in every shot. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, you were yeah. in. I, I, I watched NXT very closely for reasons. Yeah. You were in every shot, that except was... for the steel cage, because it's hard to see anything. It's hard to see NXT. anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, also, oh, here's the other thing I learned. Drake, so they don't tell you. So, so the cage, they're obviously that's a small studio. They're not lift like they are putting the cage up. And I was like, holy crap, they have to do this twice tonight, right? And mm-hmm. in a live television commercial break, well, not well, when they played like uh, the Johnny Gargano interview. Video so, packages and stuff so, like so Drake um, is has to Undertaker walk the entire cage as they put it together. <laughs> <laughs> like and it was kind of fun to watch like just drake just like undertaker it's a, walking it's all the way around page, too. Not a uh, four panel. no 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 not an eight panel wait yeah eight panel three on each side oh they did it was three on each side 12 it was a 12 panel wow so yeah yeah no no it, it was i thought it was an eight panel no that's crazy it was three on each side it was yeah. a 12 panel so it was That's so tough. To it do. was a lot to do. Yeah. So it was all the refs. So flashbacks to your favorite um, independent wrestling show setting up their steel cage. Just ratchet strapping. Uh, yeah. it like, yeah. Yeah. There's like a lot of ratchet strapping. There is. Just... There is. But it's still like I still like the old uh, IWC cage on the ring still scared the crap out of me. Like as a fan and it's as as a ringside, uh, you're, you're nowhere near it. He scares the crap out of if, you. Here, here's what. Here's the secret of it. If Keith Hot's setting it up, it's fine. <laughs> what? <laughs> if Keith Hot's out there setting it up. You're fine. What was yeah. that? 
Keith Hot helps out. He'll help out with the cage. Keith Hot. I don't know why I was thinking Keith Lee in my no, head. No, no, Keith Hot. Okay, Keith yeah. Hot. If Keith Hot's out there helping set up the cage, it's fine. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Don't worry about it. I mean, there was a time where there was an actual like engineer helping with the cage. No, no, Keith Hot. Keith Hot. That's your guy. I have in complete confidence in Keith Hot. Huh. And everything. Okay. Yeah. All right. I don't blame you on that one. No. Keith yeah. Hot's a hell of a guy. <laughs> He's got an eye for it. Yeah. That's what I learned from wrestling right there. It's Keith Hot's uh, cage ability. If I got shot and you need to get the bullet out, get Keith. <laughs> <laughs> I trust Keith. All right. All right. If you don't need to get the bullet out, still get Keith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. while you're just, at it. Just for emotional support. Yeah. 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 He's a good hugger. It's exactly. Uh, real quick. Uh, so, Rise, you got a lot of stuff going on. Show in uh, two weeks again. Yeah. Holy we crap, we you guys. Rolling, Sorg, no. Sorg, we have lessons from the chat room. Too. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Hold that Hold that plug for a second. Woof. We got the chat room here. We got lessons, and they have not loaded on me. Mike, can you get those until before I... No uh... problem. I got it. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Dave Podner learned that booking someone as a strong, kick-ass woman is the correct idea. Don't mess up Shayna, Vince. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ty Cross learned that there are snakes in the grass. <laughs> what? I get that. Joke. Well, he's talking about Marcus trying to get some of those wrestlers that are on the yeah, Mayhem I'm trying, May, to, I'm uh, trying, to, trying to get him in the rise. I'm going to sneak some of those guys That's, that's in what. There. That's what he's talking about. I'm going <laughs> to sneak Keith Lee in the rise. See, I think he needs, I think he needs he needs a change of pace. Okay, yeah, definitely. Okay. And uh, Riz learned I learned crowbar, famous for being friends, quote unquote question mark, with David Flair in WCW. Wants to wants you to know he won't take a dick flip. Uh, parentheses until next year when he gets booked for Joey Janela Spring Break. Mm-hmm. Good for crowbar. Yeah, it's actually the most people I've seen against the crowbar since uh, Jason Todd came back. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, wow, uh, Crowbar had some post out there that was like putting down the character folks yes. like Dan yes. Housen and uh, Warhorse and well, everything. Yeah. Well, respect Crowbar. Yeah, yeah, because his cause wars Crowbar with the said wall that, are legendary. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said he. Yeah. I think he said specifically he would never take anyone like he would never sell anyone thrusting their dick in his face. And I'm like, yeah, no one's ever gotten really good in wrestling by thrusting their dick forward. And backwards, mm-mm, mm-mm. and then I posted a gif of Shawn Michaels. Yeah, so, well, yeah. that was his pubic bone. He kept pulling his tights down to his pubic bone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's a Bret Hart joke <laughs> for you. Uh, here's the thing: I, I don't think I don't think I would take a dip flick, dick flip from anyone except Joey Ryan. Maybe Keith because he's the best in the well, Keith Hall. <laughs> Keep on, keep on. Uh, speaking of a place that may or may keep not on. have a dick flip, what's the next ride show? Uh, we are back in Baldwin on March 21st. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got matches announced from there. If you're in Pittsburgh, it yeah. is like it's very close right down 51, like closer, surprisingly close. Yeah, it's right by a, a little pizza place called Sincere's Pizza, like if you're looking for it. Like it's this old gym. Uh, uh, I think it's oh god, I can't remember the address. Like two eight zero one Cluster Ave, I think is the name of it. Either way, go to risewrestling.com for that info. Risewrestling.com. You can actually pre pre buy tickets at risewrestling.com right now. If you pre buy your ticket, uh, on the website, uh, floor seats are normally twenty. You get a discount of five uh, five dollars off. So they're fifteen dollars for floor seating. Uh, if you buy on the website pre buy, uh, if you buy them at the door, they will be twenty. So. It's always great to pre-buy. We're giving you a discount. Go do it. Uh, we got MV Young. We got uh, PB Smooth. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tony Johnson against Calvin Couture in a uh, uh, and, lumberjack and, match. And that is MV versus PB, yeah, right? Yeah, MV yes. Young versus PB Smooth. Uh, Trey Lamar versus Shirley Doe is on that show. Uh, some really interesting mixes of styles and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Is there a Troy Lords match on that? Troy show? Lords against the Honey Badger. Uh, by the way, Troy Lords and uh, Lee Moriarty from this past week was tremendous. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Um, Troy's going to be on that show uh, against the Badger. I'm trying to think what else is on the show. Uh, I think the Rev is on this show. Yeah, it's it's the Rev, Keith Hott, uh, Jordan Stiles, and Sean Phoenix in a four-way that may be a fatal four-way or an elimination four-way. You don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. You won't know until the ring announcer tells you. Okay. The rules are. Okay. Follow the lore. Um, so... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Wait, you're actually going to try this bold new concept where you tell the fans the rules of the match before it starts? You got it. Um, oh, yeah, so I'm, no, Baldwin's I'm, a really interesting just, note. Just as long as we fill the announcers in. I'm just in. saying, I've been to matches where they don't do that, <laughs> and it doesn't go very well. When a first guy gets pinned, and, and then the bell doesn't ring, and people are like, what is going on? Go ahead and count them. 
Yeah. I can't count. We're in apocalypse rules. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? I won't say what organization or which wrestler slash uh, referee had that discussion. But, uh, no, we're going to explain some of the rules to you. But Baldwin's, Baldwin's a new show. This is only the second time we've been there. Uh, we did really, really well the first time. So we're mm-hmm. hoping to make Baldwin a regular stomping ground for us uh, and, and to get people out there. It seems like the south of Pittsburgh was really interested in seeing some wrestling mm-hmm. that they don't have to travel for and can just like roll out of their homes and, and, and check yeah. it out. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Baldwin on 321. We are back. At the Stronghold uh, in April on April 25th. Um, tickets will be normal tickets for that. Go to our website for more info. Facebook, uh, Rise Wrestling. Twitter, at Rise underscore wrestling. Instagram as well, at Rise underscore wrestling. Uh, you can find all of our information on there. You'll see ticket links in the bios. You'll see uh, match graphics should already be tagged and up there and all that stuff. Fantastic. And of course, keep an eye on PittsburghWrestling.com. We'll have all the updates. I know I have a lot of updating I need to do because I just found out some of those dates. Uh, so keep an eye on that. We'll have announcements. A lot of great wrestling happening in Pittsburgh. Because a lot from Rise. Uh, before we go, real quick. I know because this show needs one more thing. Uh, I wanted to give a shout out. Uh, Mayhem uh, uh, Universe, um, a good friend of us. Uh, everybody knows Dutter's out there. Um, maybe because she put her butt on the window several times. Uh, but uh, um, she had an announcement this past week, and I just wanted to ask the uh, Mayhem Universe to kind of give out some good vibes uh, for her. If you uh, go over to her Instagram, she has an announcement. That's uh, Kate, Kate, Kate Marie uh, PGH on Instagram. Um, she uh, just had an announcement this uh, past week about her um, breast cancer diagnosis. And uh, with, by the way, and in the wonderful Dutter's way with a fantastic photo shoot <laughs> along <laughs> with it. Dutter's, uh, Dutter's channeled Rhea Ripley, sorry. Oh Let's my god, twisted. yes. Well, Let's actually... Get fucking twisted. It was kind of channeled Rhea Ripley. It's great. It was kind of funny because the next day, I believe Missy shared a, a, a show poster where, like, who put Katie on a poster and I think it was Serena Deeb. Uh, <laughs> so, yes. it's just like... And I it, it literally took me a minute to realize that wasn't her. Uh, but no, she does... Uh, she is going through uh, uh, chemo right now. Was diagnosed um, um, back on uh, Christmas Eve, actually, and has been uh, contending with this for a while. But uh, she, the prognosis is good. Uh, she's it's uh, caught in a very fortunate time. And of course, if you want to see the details on that, uh, you can go. Please check out the Instagram and send her some good vibes over there from the Mayhem Universe. Um, so uh, thank you, everybody that uh, has been reaching out to her, and uh, she's uh, uh, doing great. Doing great, you know, as great as you can going through chemo right now. So, uh, and you can follow that uh, for updates about that as well. So, um, thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you, Farnsworth, Bradley, Mayhem, uh, Mainstream Matt for contending with all this madness uh, and still coming back week to week. I'm worried that he's going to just call in out that was to recover. Last week. That was last week. He needed the recovery. It was the it was the it was the it was the, it was the bye week he that pulled, he gets. Pulled a Larusso. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, uh, thanks, Alex. Thanks, Tina. Mad Mike, 483 on the Twitter. YouTube.com slash poppy. Thank you. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you, Producer Missy. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at Sorgatron Media. 